who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner. Visit the town's homepage at www.amherstma.gov. Navigate to uh, the town calendar toward the bottom of that page. Click on the meeting schedule for August 24th where the Zoom link and telephone connections can be found. No in-person attendance of members of the commission or of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via techn technological means described above. In the event that we are unable to do so, uh, uh, despite best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive recording of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. So my name is Jane Wald and as chair of the Amherst Historical Commission, I'm calling this uh, public meeting and public hearing to order at 6.34 p.m. The meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as usual. Uh, so we'll take attendance of commission members. Um, and as you hear your name called, just unmute yourself, answer, and then place yourselves back on mute. Uh, Patricia Off. Present. Robin Fordham. Present. Janet Marquardt. Present. Eddie Startup. Present. Jane Wald, I too am present. Uh, I'm pleased to say that uh, town manager Paul Bockelman has uh, appointed two new members to the commission, um, Becky Sheridan and uh, Catherine Davis. Um, they, uh, uh, they will most likely be taking their place as official members uh, by the time of the next meeting. Uh, Can you tell us anything about them or is that not? Well, we wait to hear from them. I would <laughs> curious for them to uh, introduce themselves at the at the next. Okay. Um, to members of the public, uh, opportunity for public comment will be provided during the public hearing uh, and during the general public comment period, and at any other times deemed appropriate throughout the meeting. Um, uh, please be aware that uh, the commission. We'll take note of comments, but uh, won't necessarily respond to them during public comment periods. Please indicate you wish to make a comment by clicking the raise hand button when public comment is solicited. If you have joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on the phone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating uh, your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes and at the discretion of the meeting chair. Um, so moving, um, before we move on, is, is there a, uh, someone who would be willing to um, be a scribe for the meeting? take to jot down some minutes. I can volunteer for that. Oh, thank you, Robin. Thank you so much. Thanks, Robin. Yeah, that's been working well. I, I've uh, successfully adopted uh, adapted your notes into minutes. Okay. It's a it's a it's a big help. Um, so. Okay, good, good. Thank you. All right, so moving on to the public hearing, in accordance with provisions of Mass General Laws Chapter 40A and Article 13, Demolition Delay of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public hearing has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. Uh, the Amherst Historical Commission is holding this public hearing to provide an opportunity for interested citizens to be heard regarding the following demolition application request. This one is for uh, 1270 West Street, parcel 25D-29, um, uh, a request from Cynthia Holmes for complete demolition of a detached wood frame barn from approximately the early 20th century. So, um, for this hearing, um, 
if Ms. Holmes, our representative, is present, we'll, we'd be glad to hear any additional information you'd like to convey to the commission. Um, we'll ask Ben Brager uh, as town uh, planning staff, planning department staff for any other information that he might have. Um, let's see, we will then um, solicit public comment, close the public hearing, and then um, deliberate as a commission on a request. Um, so Ms. Holmes, are you here with us? Um, you are on mute. If you would unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. I hear. Okay, thank you. Um, it, uh, so we have the uh, demolition permit request and material that you submitted with that request. Um, is there anything you'd like to highlight or any additional information you'd like to bring to our attention? Um, no, just a little bit of background. I've been at the house since 83 and over the course of that time, the barn has deteriorated significantly. So much so that about between five and 10 years ago, I had a carpenter reinforce it from the inside, leaking, and I want to, um, get the permit for to, to demolish it, either I'm getting the house ready to sell. So I don't know whether it's going to be demolished before or after I sell it, but I figured I wanted to get the permit process underway. Okay, thank you. Um, ben, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, no, I've I've looked into the uh, to the property deed um, research, and you know anything I I I looked into you know various different resources to look for any historical information, and I was not able to find much on the property um, in terms of historical significance. Um, I do note that it appear uh, the barn appears on a uh, aerial map from. Uh, like the 1930s, I believe. Um, so it's roughly that that old, at least. Okay, thank you. Um, are there? Oh, I just got a step in our in our procedure here, and that's for um, historical commission members to um, ask the applicant or Ben any any for any clarifications or any other information you'd like to have. Oh, excuse me, Jane, was that directed at me? Yeah, no, that was directed at, at members of the Historical Commission. Okay. If they had other questions for you. Oh, Hetty. So the, am I looking at the diagonal sort of struts that have been put in by your carpenter? Is that is that to reinforce? Yes, yeah, the diagonals are the struts on the lower level. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, what a beautiful roof that barn has. And that has a beautiful shape. Yeah. I'm sorry that it has um, been hard to me. Um, hard to me. I'm getting a lot of yeah. I don't know if anybody else is. Um, I don't know what to do about it. But I'm it having trouble hearing what anybody says because of all the feedback. I think it, it started when Ms. Holmes signed in. I'm, I'm wondering if it's something to do with her speaker. Okay. Um, yeah. When she mutes, it's better. So something's going on with that speaker. So uh, for Cynthia, I, I, I did just mute you, but because um, I, I, it may have been causing some interference, but when uh, I'll, I can unmute you <laughs> when uh, when it's uh, when you when if you want to speak. Does that seem to help? Yes. Yeah, that helps okay. a lot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so, Hetty, were you, you were speaking? That that was that was really all I wanted to say. Okay. 
And well, Pat, I'm sorry, what was Hetty's comment? I, I think I missed it. <laughs> um, well, one was just to clarify that the diagonal um, struts were put in by her carpenter um, so that I know what I'm looking at um, mm -hmm. better. And um, then the other comment was just um, more subjective that uh, it's a, a very um, beautifully proportioned and, and nice to look at roof. <laughs> Okay. My sense is that it can't be seen from the street. Is that correct? Um, I was able to see it from the street on uh, Google Maps today. Oh, okay. I was just looking at them. And it doesn't show in the view that I pulled up and I don't remember ever seeing it when I drive by there. Um, the Google view goes, if you, if you go straight down the driveway, it's a um, sort of a right angle view. Oh. I don't know I don't know that it would be. Oh, easy. I see. Okay, I see. Yeah, yeah. If you turn. Okay. And Pat, you have your. Fingers. I'm just uh, uh, upon Hetty's comment about the beautiful roof roof line. I'm just wondering if there's been any um, inquiry as to the wood and whether any of it could be repurposed. Uh, Ms. Holmes, I think that's a question for you. Um, uh, I'll try to sit away from the speaker a little. Um, yes, I've asked several people about people that reclaim barns and everybody says that the wood is not the type that is used for reclamation. It's too brittle. Um, it's really like slats. Um, so I had a similar idea, but I've had several people say, no, that's not what they're looking for when they reclaim barns. Thank you. I love it too. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> when, when you say it's uh, too brittle, does that mean that the, the boards are too thin? The, but yeah, they're too thin. Okay. And also, um, I had a pre-listing inspection done of the house. It didn't include the barn, but the inspector did look at it and said, if it's still standing when you list the house, don't let anybody in it. <laughs> Implying that it was not safe. It's the upper level. Um, are there any other uh, questions or comments from commission members? Then um, we'll take uh, public comment if there is anyone. Uh, anyone viewing that would like to make a comment? Uh, we have two hands raised. Is it okay if I uh, recognize? Yeah. Mm -hmm. These folks will so, uh, first allow Debbie Jacques to talk. Um, if you just could. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Did I unmute? <laughs> yep, we can hear okay. you. Okay. Well, actually, um, my husband and I, Ron, are sitting here. We weren't sure we were going to be able to do this technology, but it looks like we have. Um, and we are the next door neighbors at 1260 West Street. And my husband, I think you had your first comments you wanted to say about the barn? Well, I think there's a line there between what it's going to cost to rehab it and what it's going to cost to demo it. Uh, and I can see Cynthia's point, our neighbor's point, because we're the abutters, whether it's a safety issue to market the barn or not. Uh, whether we like the historical concept, we do. It's a very cool barn. I like the roof designs. I do think it'll probably cost more to rehab it then it probably will to demolition it. So, uh, so it, it can go anyway. I'm in agreements with our, our neighbor that if she wanted to demo it, that would be fine. Or if they wanted to rehab it, that would also be fine. Uh, it, is, it is really a, a pretty wonderful looking old building. And uh, I would hope that it would still be able to be of use at some time, but however the chips fall is fine with us. <laughs> and, and I just wanted to sort of add to that, you know, my husband being a dairy farmer in this town of Amherst for years and years and years, we certainly appreciate the historical value 
and the looks of this barn. Um, the thing that concerns me um, is the safety issue. I have two um, young grandsons who come to visit and, you know, as they get older, I would hope they wouldn't venture over there because as, as you look through the pictures of the barn, there's, there's boards missing and it's, you know, it's, it's really kind of dilapidating. I would hate for my, my grandkids to get in there and, you know, fall into trouble. And I think that's probably what the inspector was referring to, to Cynthia when, you know, she's trying to sell her house. And, and I certainly understand her um, wanting to sell her home and having this be, you know, a real sore thumb for her. Um, also understanding historically, you know, what barns are. Um, so, you know, I I'm not sure what your solution here is, except to probably, you know, demolish it if it's just economically not going to be feasible for rehab. To, to rehab it. You know, I'd love to see some of those boards be used in some way for somebody, even if it was like a framing on a, on a, on a art painting or something. But, um, but I understand Cynthia's dilemma. And, and I think in reselling the house, it would be um, a real safety issue for anybody who was going to be buying it. So I guess that's what all we had to say. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so there is another hand, Meg Gage. Hi, I have my comment is on a different topic. So I guess I should wait for the general comment period. Yes, please. Yeah. And when you. is that? Uh, that comes toward the end of the meeting. When, when is it? it? It comes toward the end of the meeting. It's um, okay. kind of far down on the agenda. Okay, so I'll come back. Okay, all right. It's very brief, I'll come back. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And right. can I ask you, what did you say was the last, the, the first mention of it date-wise on maps? I, I miss, I can't remember what you said now. Um, I be believe it was uh, 1935. Yeah, I don't think this is a really old building. It looks to me like it was built as a garage or maybe a stable, but it's small and it has that window on the side and the interior just isn't, it just doesn't look like a barn. I think it's a garage that was made to look like a barn. Maybe even old wood taken from another bar, you know? Um, let's see, I still see Debbie Jacques' hand. Um, and you may have you may have said all that you want to. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so seeing no more hands, um, we're going to close public comment and um, we want to close the public hearing and then deliberate. Um, so is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Okay, Betty, is there a second? Second. All in favor of closing the public hearing, I guess we better do this by roll call. Um, uh, Patricia Off? Yes. Uh, Robin Fordham? Yes. Janet Marquardt? Yes. Betty Startup? Yes. And Jane Wall, yes. All right. Um, um, so I think we've made a few observations about about the structure, um, and Jan's made a, I think, a pretty cogent observation about what its origin might be. And, um, which is related to its age. Um, are there other thoughts that you'd like to uh, share before we vote? Jan, do Rob. we have a standard list of people, um, barn, uh, re reclaimed wood, individuals with an interest in reclaimed wood? That seems to be something that comes up a lot that would be nice if we could refer to people who are coming for demolition request. Yeah, I don't know if anybody, Ben, do, does the town keep one? I'm not no. aware of such a list, no. Jane, do you recall, I can't remember what um, building we were trying to get a 
input from somebody from, I thought it was the one out uh, towards Sunderland, but. Mm. It was it was in Montague and Jen and I worked together on that and, and, and Nate and brought out several people, one of whom seemed quite promising. And then with, you know, encouragement and prompting didn't ever bring us a report. We just and I mean, but those are barn experts, not reclamation experts. No, guys no. that build and repair. Yeah. I, like I that, we had Jesse that. Brown from White Timber and things like that, but we didn't have a reclamation. They got the owner got them, but if I remember correctly, it was going to be over a hundred thousand, close to two hundred thousand, to turn that barn into something useful, and it was fifteen hundred to knock it down and take the wood away. So okay. there's always a huge difference in in cost. cost in terms of even uh, reclaiming the materials that are taken down? Well, usually what they do is that if you give them the materials, it's lower cost to take it down. Okay. Or sometimes they'll do it for free if you give them everything there. So, but and it still is a cost to taking it down. That's probably to, taking it down save. That's probably a, larger than the demolition. Mm -hmm. If it had, Sometimes, sometimes they'll want to label things, um, which is another step. You know, label the parts of the barn, which is another step. Right. If they're selling really specific timber, they'll separate it out and take it apart carefully and um, take the okay. nails out and stuff. You know, so it could take more. But I still don't think it would ever come to as much as restoring um, something. And this, I mean, there's almost nothing left. It was just a frame with some boards over it. And now it's a tottering frame with a few boards left. I mean, I don't, I honestly, it's it's really sweet looking. It's it has a really romantic quality, but I don't think it's worth much. I mean, I don't I don't think it's a terribly valuable building um, historically. Are we ready to vote? Is there a motion? I make a motion that we vote on the demolition request. Um, I move it. Uh, well, actually, we have to move what we want to vote. Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. way we oh, want to I'm vote. sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, Jan, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I move that we grant the demolition request for 10, what was it, 77 West Street? 1270. 1270. Okay. <laughs> West Street. Uh, is there a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Um, I think that was Robin that seconded first. She's the first. <laughs> the second, second. Um, and uh, any other discussion? Then let's vote uh, by roll call. So Patricia off. I, I'm in favor of granting the demolition um, permit. Um, uh, Robin Ford. Aye. Janet Marquardt. Yes. Petty Startup. Yes. Jane Wald. Yes. Uh, so Ms. Holmes, you're, we've uh, voted to allow the, to, to approve the demolition permit so you can proceed with that, uh, with that scheduled how, however it needs to be scheduled. Um, and uh, Ben, are there any specific uh, follow-up steps that you'd like to make Ms. Holmes aware of? Um, no, it's pretty straightforward at this point. Um, we've, uh, we've actually uh, moved to a new permitting software, I think as Ms. Holmes knows. So it's all on uh, opengov.com. Uh, it's called, is the new system. So I will, um, transmit the result of this uh, meeting to through the OpenGov portal um, and let them know that the Historical Commission has uh, granted their approval for the demolition. Um, and then, uh, you know, I think the building inspecting, building inspections department will need to just uh, look it over as well to make sure everything's okay with the utility disconnections and all of that. Um, but then you, uh, your permit shall, should be issued uh, soon thereafter, so. But uh, yeah, definitely uh, you have my email and everything. So let me know if you have any f further questions. So thank you for coming. Okay. Thank you for coming.
and best wishes. Um, all right, so now we can move into the public meeting first with a uh, presentation of Amherst College Way, the, the Amherst College Wayfinding Signage Project. And, um, so there, uh, is there a- Yeah, so- uh, Yeah, thanks, Jane. Um, I was gonna actually, uh, oops. Uh, I was going to um, start the start this uh, conversation off with just a little overview of um, the wayfinding system that the town is putting forth, uh, just because it help is helpful context for um, what Amherst College is also proposing. Okay. Um, and uh, Chris Restrup is uh, should be joining as well um, shortly, right. so I'll, I'll keep an eye out for her. All right, one, one, one thing I'd like to uh, say before we go into this, and it's a disclosure uh, that is expected in circumstances like this. And, and the disclosure for me is that I am uh, technically a, an Amherst College employee. Um, and I, I don't know that we are going to be asked to make any decisions or take any votes or express an opinion as a commission, um, I don't think that my status as a college employee is going to affect my, uh, it, it's not going to affect my judgment in this case at all. Um, so, sorry, Ben, back to you. Yeah, no, th thanks, thanks, Jane. Um, yeah, so just briefly, um, so the, the town um, and you know specifically the planning department and public works department we've been developing uh, this wayfinding system for you know I think it's one of those projects that's been going on for many years but in the, it's really uh, kind of picked up steam in the last year or so um, and we are proposing the the point of this the, the goal of this wayfinding sign is to have improved um, you know directional um, signs throughout town to direct people to the specifically downtown but also destinations um, in north and south amherst um, and just to provide kind of a sense of branding and place making for the town um, this uh, sign system uh, we've uh, received approval from town council already uh, for for the changes in the public way um, but because uh, these signs are um, some of them are uh, are placed around the common, the town common, which is obviously the one of the more historical, historically significant landscapes in Amherst. So, um, uh, kind of on a similar timeline, Amherst College uh, has been developing a wayfinding system, um, mostly for their own, for internal to their campus. But there are some uh, signs uh, uh, around the periphery of the campus, and. Um, I'll invite their team in here to give a, 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 a much uh, a, a good overview of their sign system. Um, but essentially, uh, they, they're going through Amherst College is going through the permitting process right now. So they'll be talking to the design review board tomorrow um, and the town council subcommittee, which is called TSO on, on uh, Thursday, um, ultimately uh, to get approval from town council, the full town council for the placement of these signs. Um, and essentially the, the role of the historical commission is uh, an advisory role. So uh, there's no kind of like permit that needs to be granted um, necessary uh, in this case or, 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 or an approval per se, but uh, similar to how uh, the historical commission provided helpful input for the uh, 11 East Pleasant building and the impacts to West Cemetery, that was kind of an advisory role because there is a, a, a potential impact to a historical landscape in Amherst. So this is something similar where the historical commission is giving uh, advice or recommendations to the town council, uh, specifically on how the placement of these signs um, impacts, you know, the historic integrity of the, of the town common, um, and, and, you know, specifically views into and out of the common um, and, 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 and the like. Um, and uh, I should note too that, you know, um, it might not be common knowledge, but the, the town common, the town, you know, right of way, historically, it extends all the way from, uh, you know, Main Street, kind of where, you know, where uh, Town Hall is, all the way south um, to, the, to the, essentially to the rail trail or to Amherst Farmers Supply. 
um, that there, there's a brief inter interruption where the Amherst College has the uh, hill uh, that's that's there, um, not the town common, but essentially uh, the town, the historic town common does extend that far. And there's, you know, a whole um, history of kind of, uh, uh, of how um, various agreements between um, kind of, you know, the town owns it, but Amherst College manages parts of it. So it's, uh, um, especially part south south of Route Nine um, is where kind of Amherst College maintain maintains the common and it's kind of part of their campus, but it's technically town owned. Um, so it's uh, so, but we're kind of treating it as the as the historical landscape of the of the um, that that's the purview to, tonight. So um, I'm going to invite the Amherst College team in here, um, and then I'm going to just give a brief overview of uh, the town's wayfinding system. They can then talk about the Amherst College wayfinding system. And you know, I should note that there, there's areas where our our, our systems overlap and you know we're mindful of reducing sign clutter and wanting to uh, you know work together to kind of find a solution to, to make our, our, our signage systems work together. Um, so we're actively kind of having those conversations. Um, and I think one of the goals tonight is to get some guidance on kind of how we can work together to reduce um, or, or, you know, just kind of make the sign systems uh, work together better. So um, let me bring the Amherst College team in here. So I'm going to bring them in as panelists. Um, one at a time, sorry, it's a little clunky. And it looks like uh, Chris has joined us as well. So, so um, thanks everyone. And um, just because uh, Chris, you just joined, I, I, I just kind of gave an overview of um, kind of the, the role of the Historical Commission in this process and uh, a brief kind of background for, for our sign system and how we got to where we are now and just uh, letting them know the timeline for Amherst College and that um, they're kind of beginning their permitting process now. Um, and uh, I was gonna just briefly run through the town's um, wayfinding system, some of the images I, I, I put together. Um, and then I guess we could do, um, we could maybe do introductions um, as well, that might be good since we just invited some new new folks into the into the room. So, um, Tom, do you think is that a good next step? Just okay. So let me just um, share my screen here. So uh, we've been working closely with a designer um, for our sign system in Northampton, uh, Seth Gregory, um, local local designer, and um, he put together a. Uh, Kind of a, a a a branding and you know sense of branding for the town um, that we've been working at, considering our kind of family of signs. Um, so this is that kind of the 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 welcome sign that we've been working on. Um, and the uh, well, there's four uh, located around town um, entrances to, to kind of the entrances to Amherst, to, uh, directing people to the downtown. Um, one of them uh, we are proposing for this corner of the town common, kind of as you come up, um, moving, uh, traveling west up Route 9, um, to place a sign here on the town common. Um, part of the goal of our sign system is to, uh, you know, it, it's an economic driver, essentially, uh, in addition to actually directing people and, and developing a placemaking. We want to catch people at key intersections where we can then direct them towards the, the center of town. Um, you know, cause a lot of people might just be driving on route nine and not know that the downtown Amherst is in this direction. So wanting people to, you know, uh, recognize that downtown Amherst and all of its lovely offerings is right here. So um, this was the, that was the goal with this sign location. Um, 
we are so th this sign has gone through town council and has been approved and we're um you know appreciate any feedback you can offer but uh, as part of the plan um is to put a sign here the next location um is kind of a tentative location we we've been searching for a location um for the eastbound uh traffic on route nine um with with little success and we've kind of been slowly moving up the hill up the hill on route nine to find the location um and are considering this kind of a tentative location um you'll see when it when amherst college presents they are proposing a sign opposite this uh location kind of for this corner which is like an, an, an important gateway for their campus um so we're mindful of you know having competing signs here uh might not be the best but um this was kind of the, the location we've been thinking as a tentative location um for our welcome sign uh for eastbound traffic on route nine but um this has not been uh, approved by the by the town council yet um and as for the directional signs, so those are the two welcome signs. And then I believe we have 12 of these directional post signs. Uh, this is kind of the spec sheet that shows what these look like. Um, the colors uh, were for, for historic uh, and cultural um, destinations on the sign. We're kind of choosing this uh, brown color, which is you know kind of standard for high, highway signs, especially you see uh, this brown color for historic and cultural destinations. Similarly, like the blue for parking is is a standard color. And so, um, I guess yeah, this is technically on on the town common, in the corner of uh, Main Street and South Pleasant Street here, uh, putting a pl proposing to place a sign up uh, on this existing light pole. We were mindful of trying to you know put as few new poles in the ground as possible. So where where we could, we were uh, wanting to mount on existing uh, light poles such as this rather than putting anything new in the ground. Uh, this is the same sign from the opposite direction. So as you're uh, traveling uh, south. And then uh, we're switching uh, locations here. This is uh, back to the town common on Route 9 as you're traveling um, westward. Uh, you know, you will have just passed a welcome sign. And then um, to provide more guidance and direction, uh, proposing to have a directional sign here uh, to, direct, to direct people to downtown, the uh, parking, letting them know there's parking available, the visitor center and Jones Library are to the right. And then directions in south, uh, to South Amherst. Um, again, I should note when Amherst College presents, they're proposing a sign in a similar location. So clearly, we need to work on the on the uh, on coordinating those systems. Um, likewise, um, this is also on the on the town common um, within the portion south of Route Nine, which is maintained by Amherst College but owned by the town, but still the town common. Uh, proposing to place a sign here. Um, you know, there, there's a kind of, as you move uh, north on 116 here, you're kind of, as you approach this intersection, you're hit with a sequence of signs, uh, the state signs, the, you know, crosswalk signs, you know, the lane differentiator thing sign. So um, proposing to place a sign kind of along this line here. This is the same sign, but uh, moving in the opposite direction along the town common. And that is it. Yeah, that's that's the last slide. Yeah, so those are the signs that we are proposing um, on the town common. We have, again, we have, um, I believe, 10 or 11 total directional signs and four welcome signs, um, but I'm only uh, just showing you the, the ones that are on the town common. Um, just to get some feedback. And um, I think, you know, it's important to note that, you know, this is like, like the Amherst College wayfinding sign. Ours is, you know, part of a, a larger system overall. So the signs kind of work in sequence to direct people towards destinations downtown, to welcome them to Amherst, and to, you know, honestly, the main goal is to get people to find parking, because that's an important issue um, to address. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and um
I think I have all the Amherst College team in here. So they have, um, yeah, they're all here. So I'm gonna, oh, uh, I guess I, we, I should see well, if, uh, can I, yeah. Can I first ask um, uh, if, thank you, Ben, that's a very helpful uh, illustration and presentation. Um, I wonder if uh, Chris Prestrup would like to say anything at this point. Yeah, thanks. Oh, Chris, you're on mute, sorry. Thank you very much for having us tonight. And um, we're pleased to present the uh, Town of Amherst Wayfinding Signs and have Amherst College present their Wayfinding Signs. We are working on um, some details regarding coordination of our sign systems. And so um, mostly we have the systems worked out, but there are a few places where we need some further coordination and we're gonna be working on that. Um, and we're hoping that the Historical Commission will um, make recommendations to the um, Town Services and Outreach Committee. They are meeting on Thursday, and the goal of their meeting is to make recommendations to Town Council. So the Town Services and Outreach Committee has received a referral from Town Council to examine the Amherst College Wayfinding Sign System, particularly the signs that are in the town right of way and on the town common. And as a result, TSO, Town Services and Outreach has reached out to the Historical Commission, to the Design Review Board, and um, they will be reaching out to DAAC, Disability and Access Advisory Committee, um, who will be offering recommendations. Meanwhile, there's a parallel track um, the planning board will be reviewing the Amherst College signs that are uh, proposed to be on the um, private property of Amherst College, not in the town right of way, not on the town common, and not in the educational district. So those are signs that need site plan review by the planning board. So um, Amherst College has been, I would say, very patient with us in our uh, explanation of our um, somewhat Byzantine review system, but they're um, willingly going along with all of these different groups that they have to meet with and hopefully they'll come out with a good uh, result in the end. So thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Um, um, so um, introduction, um, Tom, would you introduce your team to us please? Sure, <clears throat> happily. Um, so, hi everybody, nice to see you all again. Um, I'm Tom Davies and I'm the Director of Design and Construction. And from my office, uh, Seth, Seth Wilschutz has been um, leading the charge on this process as one of our, our in-house project managers. And we have from Roll Baresi, uh, Andrew Baresi and Sam Pease. And they are the, the two uh, lead design folks for the system and working with us for uh, probably longer than I want to say. I was going to say a year, but it's probably more like 18 months or something. Um, longer than I want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> COVID time warp. Um, yeah. So that's us. Nice to meet everybody. Yes, nice, nice to meet everybody. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, so ben, We're going to let our signage designers walk through the presentation, if that's OK. Yes, thank you. I think they have permission to share their screen, Ben. Yep. Yep. You know, I, I should probably give a, a quick kind of why <laughs> before we go into the, the details. Um, and, uh, you know, Amherst College uh, essentially has no signage. Um, People, people will, will often say that, you know, they've worked there for a couple of years and they still don't know where certain things are because, you know, if, if you, I, I'm sure you've all been on other campuses, you know, Smith or UMass or where, you know, local or not, um, it's pretty typical to have a, a, a fully integrated um, signage system for a campus so that Folks know where to go um, when they're coming for the first time and they know how to get around when they're there. Um, the college has not in the last 18 months, but in the, well, I'll say other times 
Um, you know, we literally have tens of thousands of visitors a year to the campus, be it for cultural events or, um, you know, athletic events or touring or visiting their, you know, students or whatever it might be. So um, it is a, um, it's, it's a bit of a um, um, glaring need, quite honestly. Um, and um, the, but, but the interesting thing is that the reason that this came up is because um, the, the college had a kind of a realization that, you know, we, we, we put so much emphasis on um, accessibility and inclusion and um, welcoming and, you know, in our programs and, and how we attract students from all kinds of different, you know, uh, places and cultures and economic means around the world. And yet, when you get there, it's as if, like, if you don't know where you're going, you're not supposed to be here. You know, it's, it's, it's not friendly. Um, so that's the primary motivation by, behind this whole um, effort is to uh, correct that and, and project an image um, or a feeling that is more consistent with the zeitgeist of the core values of the institution. So I, I just thought it would be relevant to kind of give that you know, big picture overview. And now uh, I'll hand it off and, and we'll, we'll jump into you know, the, the, uh, the details. Thanks, Tom. Chris, I see your hand is up. I just wanted to say one thing. I'm sorry I came in late and I'm sure Ben has told you this before, but what we're asking the Historical Commission to do tonight is to look at the signs that are being proposed on the town common. And uh, we feel that the Historical Commission has a unique position in its role as kind of a keeper of the town common. Um, although you are not a permit granting board in this role, we're um, requesting that you provide recommendations to the Town Services and Outreach Committee um, in their review of these signs, and then they will pass their recommendation on to the um, Town Council. So thank you very much. You probably heard that from Ben previously, but I just wanted to reiterate that. Shall we jump in? Yep, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Thanks. Great. All right. Um, thank you, everyone, uh, for uh, meeting with us. Uh, and I'm um, excited to share with you, um, you know, the work that we've been doing with Amherst College. Um, as Ben mentioned, uh, we're kind of currently working with a, a coordination effort between the the cities or the town's wayfinding and uh, the Amherst College wayfinding, especially in the in the kind of more public realm along the peripheries. Um, so um, that's going to be something that's going to be coming uh, in the future. Um, but what we really wanted to share, as Chris mentioned, is um, what we're proposing in the um, uh, in the kind of the town green and the town you know that town green area. Um, so. Just to give uh, the group a real kind of a brief overview of the entire program for Amherst College, uh, we do have uh, a series of signs uh, similar to what Ben was mentioning that you know, yeah, you were seeing a snippet of the signage for the uh, for the town. Um, we have uh, primaries and primary and secondary gateways, uh, trailblazers. Um, Vehicular directionals, large, which are the ones that are really kind of uh, oriented more to the uh, surrounding, um, as well as vehicular directional smalls, um, which are more for interior campus roads. Building identification, you know, as Tom mentioned, um, really to kind of put out this kind of plaque and uh, indication of the name of the building so that if you're going to the Wilson Wilson Admission Center, you can find it, you know where it is. Or if you're going to Valentine Dining Hall as a visitor, uh, you'll be able to see it. Uh, as well as uh, clearly identifying parking and what regulations uh, happen at those parking lots. Um, in addition, we're looking at some uh, cultural, uh, cultural 
destination kind of flag marking, um, such as for uh, Holden Experimental Theater, um, for a, a banner, a banner type system, um, kiosks with uh, maps, a tri-sided, which also allows us an opportunity for um, advertising of um, uh, cultural events or events that are happening on campus um, or possibly even partnership with the town. Uh, a double-sided kiosk, again, using this, uh, using the, uh, the campus map uh, and then uh, a lower tabletop and then pedestrian directionals. The pedestrian directionals are really uh, meant to happen throughout the campus themselves. Um, the, we based our graphic standards, just to give a brief overview on this, or based off of the uh, Amherst College Visual Identity Toolkit. Um, so this is where our colors are coming from. This is a way for Amherst to unify their messaging and unify their brand um, by use of color, use of typography, uh, and use of mark. Um, and uh, we're looking at various ways of installing the signs um, as we needed. Um, so there's a few different signs that we wanted to kind of go through with this group uh, with. Um, first of which, uh, you know, we're looking at a trailblazer up here on uh, Main Street, and you'll see a rendering of this later on. This trailblazer actually uh, is tentative as well. Um, this is one of those spots that we're working with the town uh, with the potential of being able to in include some of this type of information with town, the town, town sign for um, over here at Sweetwater Park. Uh, we also have um, our downtown Great Gateway, as Ben had mentioned, um, catty corner to the welcome sign, the tentative welcome sign 4A. We have the town sign 9, which is the wayfinding sign. Um, again, uh, kind of next to our vehicular, large vehicular directional. Uh, that tri-sided kiosk that you saw the initial view of, um, building identification, uh, another vehicular directional, um, and then uh, some various building IDs and tabletop mass, maps that happen within that um, within the, the, the town green, um, as well as our secondary gateway here that happens down here at Quadrangle. Most of these you're going to see renderings of uh, in just a few minutes. Um, located on the, the, the additional south southern part of the green, um, we do have a secondary gateway, uh, which is the what's we're calling the athletics gateway because this is the primary athletics area. It's also the area um, where currently Wilson Admission Center is right here. Um, so we really wanted to be able to put out a way to welcome potential students, future students, uh, and visitors uh, for athletic events um, or uh, or uh, theater events uh, at Kirby and um, uh, the two the two uh, major theaters here um, to be able to kind of welcome them to the campus um, and again the parking identification um, as we go forward. So um, as you saw in our um, kind of our initial uh, kit of parts, the ones that we're really looking at the Historical Commission to look at are the, um, the this particular secondary gateway at Quadrangle Drive. Um, what we're doing here is we're taking a square post, we're pivoting it at a 90 degrees uh, or 45 degrees to give it a diamond shape. We're then bracketing that and then having our panel kind of hang off uh, with a little bit of open space between the post and the panel itself. We're doing that um, very similarly uh, for all of our vehicular directionals. And these are the messaging that we're, we're, we're currently working with the, with the town on uh, for the B1s, which are our, made our large vehicular directionals. Similarly, as a system for the B2s, which are smaller um, vehicular directionals, again, um, this particular one to the left is um, for uh, leading folks to museums and visitor parking uh, and then accessible parking for Johnson Chapel and the museums um, up off of Quadrangle Drive. One of the key um, 
strategies for the uh, for the sign program is to avoid having folks driving up Quadrangle Drive and through the first year quad. Really trying to keep that as pedestrian based uh, as possible, uh, just with the amount of students that are walking around there and the kind of the, the cluster of, um, you know, both housing and academic uh, facilities there. It just doesn't really make sense to have that being a major cut through for, for through the university. Um, down uh, here at the Southern, uh, Southern Green, we have one particular, we have one uh, vehicular directional sign that uh, leads you to admissions to alumni gym um, and then also down the hill to the ore rink entrance. Um, the one building ID that we had mentioned um, that's over here is for 79 South Pleasant. Uh, that, those are the offices for Amherst College. Uh, and then we also have one down uh, here um, at, uh, I'm sorry, down here at Converse Hall. Um, so indicating the entry to Converse Hall uh, as, people would, uh, as people would approach. Um, we have two parking lots, parking lot ideas that live within the, uh, that, that live within the town green, one at Converse lot here, um, and then one at Ore Rink lot down here. Um, and then uh, we have our tri-sided kiosk. We have two that happen. One, again, um, over near 79 South Pleasant in, a, in, in the green space. Uh, and then we have a second one of those um, in front of Alumni House, which is over, I believe it's just outside of, um, just outside of the green here. Um, again, the tabletop kiosks, uh, we have uh, one of these that, that's located again, right near Converse Hall. So as folks are parking at Converse Hall, they're getting out of their cars, they're able to identify where they need to go, where they, you know, the, their spacing um, and where they're going on campus, um, as well as uh, one of the things that Amherst is doing um, in addition uh, is they are um, proposing doing land acknowledgement uh, statements at each one of these map kiosks. So this is a statement um, understanding that uh, Amherst, College, Amherst and Amherst College live on native lands um, and these are the native, uh, and this is the native um, indigenous, uh, indigenous tribes that, that had lived there in the, in the, in the past. Um, so as I had mentioned, uh, I'm happy to share rendered views. Um, so um, as Ben had mentioned, this is our uh, corner gateway at the corner of um, at the corner of the green. This over, this entire structure um, sits at four feet um, to the top, so it's four feet to here. Um, what it is is that it's a curving uh, aubergine uh, panel. Um, set on a granite uh, granite pylon on one side and a granite seat wall on the other. Uh, we wanted to keep this as low and as open as possible to again, you know, understand the importance of the views into the common, the views into the green, um, maintaining the tree that's currently existing, um, and you know, just being able to have a, a, a marker uh, for. Um, Amherst College at this, at this major gateway. Um, there is also uh, currently, uh, we're working with a landscape architect uh, to kind of also help with siting uh, and also grade treatments uh, at, the, at, these, at this location and also at our other uh, primary gateway location. Um, our, second, uh, our second primary gateway, this is the one that is over, um, again, over by the athletic complex um, and admissions. So it's the same thing. It's a 12 foot, no, I'm sorry, it's an 18 foot bar. Um, but this is again, a lot, this is a lot lower. This is only about two and a half feet uh, tall to three feet tall. Um, but this extends that seat wall um, to give a place of uh, respite um, as you're going back and forth from the athletics complex uh, down the, across the street 
um, to here. And it's also giving the uh, college an opportunity for that photo moment for their students, um, for their potential future students uh, and current students saying, hey, I'm gonna, I've chosen to go to Amherst. Um, our secondary gateway that's happening at Quadrangle Drive is a lot smaller. It's what we call a tavern style sign. Again, this is uh, just a single post. Uh, it's about 14 feet tall um, with uh, dimensional lettering on, on a, a aubergine panel. Um, again, also identifying the um, established date for the university uh, or for the college and then uh, the, the name of the road. So in this particular case, it's Quadrangle Drive. We have something similar to this uh, down at East that would just say East Drive, but that's out of the, uh, the town common. Um, this is the, what the proposed trailblazer would be um, on Main Street. Um, again, we're working with the town uh, to try and incorporate some of these messages into the town wayfinding. Um, and as Ben mentioned, uh, this is one of those spots that we have uh, signs. Uh, we, we both have signs almost in the same location. So we're trying to, again, trying to reduce sign clutter and, and figure out the correct progression of town sign, Amherst sign. You know, does this town sign come always come first? Does Amherst town sign come second? What is the messaging on the Amherst sign? What is the messaging on the town sign? Um, this location right here is where the town welcome sign is. Um, and again, at the other side of this is where that tentative uh, town welcome sign is, and our and the Amherst Gateway is over here. Um, this is kind of a superimposed view of where um, the town the town wayfinding um, is currently placed. Um, again, uh, coming down uh, Route Nine. Uh, coming to our the, the downtown corner, um, our gateway would be here. Um, we're really kind of directing for in this particular case to museums and visitor parking. Uh, we're also talking about um, directing towards the Emily Dickinson Museum. And one of the things that we had initially started talking about was directing towards downtown as well, really to connect the, the college to the downtown. Um, you know, to allow the students and allow the visitors to understand that you're within walking distance of, you know, places to eat, places to visit, places to shop. So, so this is coming north up 116, right? Uh, yeah, north up 116. I, I apologize. Yeah. Um, and again, uh, looking at uh, kind of where uh, our two signs, uh, sign families inter interact. Um, this is coming uh, south on 116. Um, again, our intersection with our gateways, our, the gateway is here. Um, again, this is directing folks to take a left to go down to the museums uh, and visit our parking for Amherst, straight ahead for admission and athletic center. Um, and then going up Quadrangle Drive so that we can pre prevent vehicular traffic or deter vehicular traffic going up and through the first year quad. We have museums and visitor parking going down this way. Um, and then uh, only really uh, encouraging accessible parking for Johnson Chapel um, and the museums um, up along uh, the first year quad. What our building signage looks like uh, in situ. Um, so this would be a sign for Converse Hall. One of the things that you will notice is um, that some of these have uh, various coloring um, on the return and on the wool. Uh, so for the vast majority of signage that's really off campus and is um, kind of more public facing in the way of not necessarily, uh, public's not the right word. Um, kind of more on the outskirts, we're using the Amherst purple and this dark aubergine color, uh, but where we're kind of coming in more into the interior of campus and campus buildings, we're using their secondary palette, 
Um, so uh, this, this particular orange color is called autumn leaf. Um, so this is part of that Amherst visual identity toolkit that we had mentioned. Um, each one of these signs carries the name of the building, carries the name of the year that the building was either found, built, or uh, renovated. Um, and then it also carries the address of the building as well. Moving down the hill, uh, or actually moving across, so this is uh, at 79 South Pleasant. And you can see here that this one, uh, since it is kind of off campus, is picking up off of that aubergine and, universe, uh, and college purple. Um, Converse, uh, Converse lot, um, again, as you come down from Converse Hall, uh, this is the entry um, to uh, Converse lot. Uh, Converse lot would, would then have an uh, indication of when permit parking is, um, when, uh, you know, no overnight parking, um, and then uh, bringing again the identity of the Amherst College as kind of a watermark along the bottom. Um, and we had talked a little bit about the, um, the uh, tri-sided kiosk. So this is the one that's happening at 79 South Pleasant. Um, the idea of incorporating a paved or a cobbled area um, to place a tri-sided kiosk again uh, with the opportunity for um, indica uh, indicating um, uh, in events that are happening at Kirby, at uh, the Mead, at Bineski, uh, and uh, a campus map. Yeah, th this location was chosen because we have a, a lot of visitors that come to the um, Human Resources Department in particular that's housed in, in 79 South Pleasant. And to um, have those folks um, kind of have a, a greeting, a, a, you know, an orientation almost, um, and, uh, and, and also just have a feel for um, what the college is all about, even before they walk into HR. And then um, lastly, um, as we had kind of mentioned, uh, so this is Converse Hall here. Converse Lot is down the hill. Um, again, as we were leaving our vehicles, walking up the hill, um, into having this lower kind of tabletop um, style uh, map so that folks can kind of come up to it, be able to see the, to be able to see the campus, figure out where they need to go and be able to navigate their way through um, and then pick up with the uh, pedestrian directionals within on the inside of campus. Sam, if I could just say a few things about the design and the of course, which the historic commission might be interested in some of the rationale for uh, these design decisions that we've made. Um, in every opportunity that we can, we're introducing uh, granite as a pedestal material for, particularly for the uh, map kiosks. And this is, for the most part, reclaimed granite that's um, in storage. Uh, that is a material that occurs elsewhere on campus. And so you're going to see a unity of material throughout campus and the signage as well. The dark uh, purple, which Sam is calling aubergine, is virtually black, um, but it does retain some of the Amherst identity in that purple tone. But it will definitely read very much as a very dark tone. And the reason we're doing that is because we like the way a dark sign panel recedes in the landscape, okay? And what pops is the information on that sign. So very legible information, but a sign that tends to, um, again, meld with the environment. Uh, the posts are a charcoal gray tone, picking up on that granite tonality, as well as a black wrought iron kind of bracket that attaches to the post. So there are traditional techniques and materials and, and approaches, but in also a contemporary um, uh, kind of design that we think creates something that is, we hope enduring and, and more sort of on the timeless spectrum as opposed to um, very stark um, contemporary uh, 
forms and, and approaches and avoiding the sort of ye old um, approach as well. So we're trying to strike a nice balance there from a design perspective as well. So um, for what that's the rationale behind many of our decisions. Maybe Sam, you can circle back to the kit of parts from the beginning and folks sure. can, can uh, raise any questions or concerns they have. So let's begin with maybe uh, questions of information or clarification from uh, members of the commission. Um, I have one uh, uh, to begin with, and is there, um, for the areas that the historical commission is being asked to focus on, um, is there a, a, a plan, and I, I think maybe you might have that or might have shown it that shows um, the locations of both college signs and town signs. Yeah, so all of our zoning plans, the ZP series of this uh, presentation, um, they both indicate the town signs mm -hmm. um, as well as the college signs. So you'll see right. town sign seven, town sign six, town sign four and town sign five. Just, just for a little bit of clarification, Sam, or you, go ahead, Tom, you're going to say the same thing. You're, you're, you're probably going to say the same thing I am. Go yeah. ahead, keep going. Um, the, the, blue, the blue boundary, I can't move the mouse because I don't have control of the screen, but the blue boundary that you're seeing that includes all the signs that were shown by Sam, including some of the ones in the renderings, that's actually the design review board overlay boundary and includes some signs like the table map a tabletop map kiosk display F3004 that are not on the town common. And so there's a little bit here that we've presented that's actually a little bit outside your purview. The ones that we specifically are requesting historical commission uh, insight on are the ones on the town common. So it'd be ones on this particular page like B1003, A1001, B1006, the ones on town owned land. Right. I'm sorry if that's a little confusing. There's a lot of overlapping jurisdictions here. Uh, and so it's- Right, you know, we're, we're talking to the design review board shortly. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, it's, there, it's, it's slightly different because the, that, there's, a, there's a, a clear definition that's, that's, that's uh, in the bylaws uh, of their purview mm -hmm. and it extends whatever it is, a hundred feet from the edge of the common or something like that. Okay, thank you. Um, Chris Brestrup and then Janet Markworth. I made a list of the signs that I think the Historical Commission um, would want to focus on that are within the um, purview of the Historical Commission because they're on the town common. So if you wanted to go through that list, I'd be happy to review that and um, Amherst College could show you where the location is and what the sign looks like. Okay, um, would, that, would that be helpful to you all? I think it would be helpful to me. Does it sound good to the commission members? Do, yeah. Does Jan want to chime in before we do that in case it informs this? whatever we're... Well, I was, <clears throat> I was just going to ask some sort of general questions of both. One is, if both the town and the college are pointing towards museums in the center of town, so we're both pointing towards Emily Dickinson, we're both pointing as theoretically south to the Eric Carl and the Yish um, book center, if, if we're all par pointing towards parking or the town center, what about having one directional cluster of signs and then things that are Amherst College could be in the aubergine and blue or purple on the same set of directional signs rather than repeating? Um, I, I mean, I, I, we do have an awfully lot of signs as you 
pointed out, and we're, you're, you just showed that they're gonna be like stacked up right behind each other. If you have a sign pointing towards the center of town and we have a sign pointing towards the center of town, what's the point? Why can't we have one sign on one post that we share, right? And it says once, center of town parking. Yeah. Also, if on the town signs, if there's a P in blue for parking on town common, why do we have to have another blue sign that says parking pointing the same direction? And will the banner come down that says parking all these ways? I mean, it's it's just overwhelming. Um, so am I, I am I correct in um, thinking that this is one of the issues you want some input on from us and from the design review board? We have already started these conversations with the town. We actually had a meeting earlier today with David Zomek and Christine Brestrap and Ben and Marie Pollack and our whole team um, to try to resolve some of these issues. And so we are on top of that. Part of this is just a sequence thing. Um, we haven't resolved all of these yet, but we are not, to put it, to put it simply, uh, Jan, we are not planning to repeat messaging. Um, right. I'm, I'm going to be in the meeting tomorrow through. night too, so you'll hear this again. <laughs> um, this has not been, uh, we're, it's going to take us a little bit of time to work through, you know, exactly what is on what sign, but the planning department and Ben and Christine can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's my understanding that they have approval by town council for locations, but the specific messaging on each sign is uh, being worked through by the planning department. And so we are going to continue those discussions with them. And we kind of came up with a system earlier today where they reinforce each other. And Andrew might want to talk to that more. But um, yeah, yeah, we reinforce yeah. each other, but we do not duplicate each other's messaging. And yeah, they're, they're, the intent is not to duplicate messages. Um, if we are currently saying on our sign, downtown left, we're going to be removing that information from our sign and it will be strictly some, a message that the town signage will convey. Uh, okay. Similarly, if we're referring to the Emily Dickinson Museum, uh, we need, we'll be making a decision with the town as to who wants to refer to that museum, us or, uh, us or the town. Um, it is an Amherst College venue, but it's also one of those destinations where sort of the exception proves the rule. It's a, it's a global uh, sort of destination and, and perhaps it's more appropriate on a town sign, but that's to be determined. But, but in general, we, we're not repeating messages. We're not referring to the Eric Carl Museum um, or any other colleges, obviously. <laughs> um, so if we say museum, it's really the Mead, the Nesky, um, those sorts of things. Things um, that are right on campus. Yeah, right. exactly. Most college property. Is there a concern about sharing a post and who maintains the signs? Like if you were to have all the directional signs split between the college and the town on one post, is that a concern over who owns the maintenance of that then? Well, I think we're just in the beginning stages of that kind of coordination, Jan. Um, and right now our thinking is that it's a tandem sort of thing where you first come upon the town signage with all that information. And then secondarily, you come upon an Amherst college sign about their destinations. That may be the smartest approach, but if there is this sort of melding opportunity, um, that's something to explore and discuss, uh, but that's, that's not currently our thinking. Because it would kind of mix up the wayfinding systems, right? If you had yeah. a post with four or five of the town wayfinding colors and fonts, and then you have two of the Amherst College colors and fonts inserted in between, I mean, I think it would work well. It brands the college separately from the town, but it may not be considered aesthetically as, as I don't know, suave. Yeah, it might start. It might it might end up being more confusing than than clear, you know, when you start seeing all this sort of color coding on in, in one sign. 
you now have to learn <laughs> what that color coding system is uh, in order to fully decipher what that sign is trying to say. Mm -hmm. I think the other issue with putting all of that stuff in one sign is if you're driving along, in our experience, you know, a driver can really take in maybe most messages, um, possibly six. But when you start putting it all together into one sign, you know, people's eyes tend to glaze over and just like, you know, it's just too much information. So there's a lot to work out. And we're starting that work with the town. Um, but you're absolutely, you, you hit, you hit the nail on the head in terms of let's not repeat information. How can we coordinate locations and all this kind of stuff? So we're, we're going to be doing that for sure. One last thing. Okay, I'm going to ask Pat, uh, call on Pat. Um, yes, thank you. I'm actually going to be echoing Jan because I had the same thought watching some of the placement of the signs where there was a pole with the Amherst College directions and then six feet away, the town of Amherst directions. And, and I uh, agree with Jan, there might be some way to have one poll and, and, if, and unified directions to parking, to cultural, to whatever. But I was disturbed by the couple of slides you showed where, where there were duplicate signs very close to one another and um, the necessity of doing that. I, I can understand the gateways to Amherst College. I can understand your on-campus signage, and I can understand your wanting anyone coming to Amherst College to be oriented to the town. But to have multiple poles with multiple signs within a few feet of each other seems some, somehow um, contradictory to sign, signage help. Hey, Tom, did you have your, did you want to respond? Yeah, I, I did. I, I wanted to clarify that, that that was not intended to show uh, the solution. That was intended to show the problem. And, and that we just started today to collaborate with the folks from the town on figuring out how to best solve that problem. So, so the, the, you know, the, the reason we showed that image is to show that we've got a problem to solve not that this is the answer. <laughs> um, yeah, I think yeah. we all recognize that, you know, it doesn't work um, a, as design because, and there's a, you know, there's a history here that we, we designed something that responded to um, what the town had originally um, proposed, but then that changed. And so now we're kind of circling back and catching up with that. So um, again, the, the, this review is happening um, uh, before we could, you know, because this is happening real time, literally today, um, before we could actually, you know, get through that um, coordination process. And it's the only part of the whole signage approval process, which of course involves many, many signs that we're not looking at. This is the only part that's problematic. Um, so you're happening, you're, you're, you happen to be, have, uh, uh, you know, kind of purview uh, related to the exact area where we've got work to do uh, collaborating with the town. So I just, you know, felt I should let you know yeah. that we, we don't like it. That, you know, it, that's not that's not how it's going to be. Well, it, it was obvious to Janet, to me, and perhaps Hetty, who has her hand up, that those things were problematic and needed to be resolved. So we need to speak of them. And I'm glad to know that you're working on it. Thank you. Hetty? Well, thank you very much for um, presenting all this information. It is, it is uh, I, I'm going to try and not repeat what Jan and um, Pat have already talked about. Um, there's one area where I, I'm really concerned um, and that is the, the corner of Route 9 where it intersects with South Pleasant um, onto the corner of Town Common. Um, so on the right will be your gateway sign with the seat wall in aubergine. Um, I think the letters of that sign are too large, um, even with universal design considerations in mind um, for the scale of that very important junction in town. Um, and on the other side, where the Amherst downtown sign would be for the town of Amherst um, that Ben um, showed us. 
do we, maybe I'm kind of being very, um, like I've moved here, I know how to find my way around, you know. Um, do we really need the word Amherst again? Couldn't we just have a sign that says downtown to, to the left? Um, I mean, I, I've only been here four years and I've really loved walking around Amherst College's campus and finding the mead and going to the Bernaski Museum with my kids and then hearing Blair Clayman last week talking about the memorial site. Um, you know, so I have this idea now that do, do you want as a college to have anyone walk up the hill to the the top to the past the frost library and 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 to the summit if you like to see the holy oak range do, do you want that to be something that people experience whether they're planning on coming to the college or not um it just seems to me a really you know crucial place to go um you know when kind of getting to know the town um so you know i'd love to see some wayfinding that's appropriate you know develop to so that we are encouraged to walk and leave our cars behind um if we can or you know find our way through the landscape um to to that view um from um where where commencement or graduation is is located and the view down to the fields um that's just really me kind of talking off the top of my head, I did, I did wonder as we were listening to your presentations about whether these kiosks or banners or gateways or tabletop um, signs might not have embedded within them some kind of um, electronic uh, connection so that people could call up information or further directions or land acknowledgement information, which I think is really great. Um, I, I think all of those things are possible when you start to sort of layer these signs between the town and, and the college. Um, and, and yeah, we, 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 we have a lot of street furniture, you know, that we're considering um, in the meeting tonight. And we want to look beyond that to see what's behind the signs or behind the 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 tab the, the tabletop kiosks. We want we want that to not be an impediment. Um, so I I, um, I I I feel for you <laughs> as well, just having well, to sort of consider those 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 design yeah. issues well, and access issues. To respond to your 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 thoughts and questions, which I think are terrific. Um, the rationale from a wayfinding standpoint is, as Sam had mentioned, you know, this is very much a pedestrian campus. And so our focus in terms of what we're talking, telling folks in cars is essentially, you know, first we're taking care of the admissions and the athletics thing because you know, we're really focused on prospective students, obviously, and first time visitors, but also focusing on parking uh, that is in tandem with the museum message. So what we're trying to do is get folks to the principal parking resources, get out of their car, and then at every single parking lot, we have that two-sided map kiosk that has a map and a unique you are here noted so that you can immediately upon getting out of your car, orient yourself to the overall campus where all the museums are labeled and the music hall and the theaters and, and everything like that. So that you have a sense of where you are in relation to those things. And then we have a series of smaller scale pedestrian directional signs, not a trail of breadcrumbs certainly because we don't want to clutter the campus with a bunch of stuff but enough at key decision points to get you on your way and then with these taller banners at the arrival point of a museum or the music hall or the theater announcing and celebrating these these key destinations on campus so that's kind of the strategy 
Um, and, and in answer to your question, don't you want people to walk up and see these things? A most emphatic yes. Um, and we're hoping that this strategy, this sort of combination of um, getting fo folks in cars to the right lot, getting them out of their car, orienting them and trailblazing them to these locations. You know, we think will be successful. Um, certainly there'll be a kick the tires period of time, but you know, that's, that's the approach. Um, and then where we can coordinate with the town messaging to reinforce all of that, I think would be great. You know, um, uh, that's, that's sort of the idea. So. Um, Chris. So I, I just wanted to mention the fact that um, the Historical Commission is not being asked to look at all of the signs that were presented tonight. And um, I'm so glad that Amherst College did present a broader view of their sign program, but there are really 10 signs that I counted that are actually signs that are within the town common that we would like the Historical Commission to focus on. And so when you get to that point, I'd be happy to kind of walk you through what those signs are, and then you might want to have a discussion about each one. Thank you, Chris. Um, you know, sort of reflecting on both of these presentations and especially the visuals, the, the areas that I'm most interested in or concerned about are, uh, is that strip down Route 9 between uh, South Pleasant Street and Boltwood, where there are just a lot of signs. And then the other places where there's potential overlap, not necessarily confusion, but potential overlap is where there are Amherst College signs on town property or town right of way. So, um, uh, so I have one quick question and then I think it might be a good thing for us to go look at Chris Restrip's list of um, signs specifically linked to the town common. And that question is, um, is, there, is there any signage, Amherst College signage planned for the Inn on Boltwood? Or is that, is that going to kind of stand alone as it is right now? For the Inn on Boltwood? Yeah, yeah, because no, that borders the town common. No, there, there is nothing proposed that is, you know, at that property or near that property or even referring to it. It, it's um, to the, you know, unless you really know, uh, it, it's a separate entity. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, Chris, would you, would you mind? Uh, Sorry, leading us through those 10 signs. Yes, let's start at the top. At Can the we see end. the rendering of each one as she says it? That's a good idea. Yep. Very I good will idea. do my best. Okay, because yeah, it'd be nice to think in terms of how does this look framed, or uh, how does this affect the historical architecture and environment behind it as she's telling us where it is? So the first sign that is within the town common area is the sign on Main Street. And it is on the northern side of Main Street. And it's a, it's a small, what Emmers College calls a trailblazer sign. And there's been discussion with the uh, town about whether this sign is actually needed because the town is going to have um, at least one, if not more, um, post-directional signs up at the intersection of Main Street and South Pleasant. And so whether this sign here is redundant or not is a question that we're discussing, but this is one of the signs that we consider to be within the area of the town common. It also happens to be placed exactly where there has just been a writer's walk sign installed. Is that right? Yep, right, right the there. Uh-huh. Um, it's, it's, it's a slightly different location, but it's, it's close by. It's those steps and it's to the left of those steps, isn't it? Um, no, the writer's walk it's signed is, is, it's in front of uh, the lime red tea house. 
Yeah. I, um, I'm, I'm going to so just jump in about, to say, oh, sorry, Jane. I was just going to say, I think this is probably moot because I, I think this is very likely to go away and, and you know, okay. be incorporated into the, the town wayfinding. Okay. Okay. So, um, so, we so just to, just one thing about process is that because there are ten of these signs and now nine, happily just nine, um, it may be most useful to discuss each one just in the moment. You know, when Chris shows us the sign and the and the location, maybe we can we can share our thoughts at that point rather than try to get to the end of all of them and try to remember what we've seen and, and comment on. Right. So right. that sounds good. Let's let's do that. Okay, the second sign is um, on the north side of College Street, which is Route 9. It's number B1.003. It's a vehicular directional sign and it's a large sign. So that would be this sign here. And there are a number of comments that we have about this sign. One is that the public works department would prefer that the sign be on the um, opposite side of the sidewalk and that it be at least eight feet off the sidewalk so that they can get their equipment under it. And then the other thing is that the town has a uh, post directional sign that we would like to put along this um, area here. So the town and Amherst College have some discussion that needs to go on about exactly where is the proposed Amherst College sign going to go? What's it going to say? And what is our sign going to say? So I wonder if, um, well, maybe we should have a discussion about this and then uh, decide that we need to have another meeting with Amherst College. The staff does, needs to have another meeting with Amherst College to decide what the resolution of this location is going to be. Could you make the resolution larger so we can see what it says, what, what it's pointing towards? Sam, maybe you could just diminish the pages. Yeah, that's what I'm working on. Let's make it, yeah. And Krista, I think that the um, the the uh, input there from DPW, I believe that's uh, new information for us. So we have an, another layer of uh, complication here. Right? Mm -hmm. And if you put it on the other side of the sidewalk, this green sign is going to hide it. Yeah, that's, that's very far. Different. Yeah. Well, one solution is that you flip the orientation of the panel to post. So the post could be on the back side of the sidewalk as requested, but the panel would essentially almost stay in the same location. So the post would go to the right hand side as opposed to the left hand side, but the panel would essentially suspend over the sidewalk. How high does is the bottom from the ground? The uh, okay. DPW says eight feet is what they would prefer so they can get their- What's the proposal? You had some dimensions on one of the sheets. Uh, we do have them. I believe that they are uh, seven feet currently. Yeah, 10, six and three, two, yeah. So Chris, do you mean by eight feet, do you mean eight feet uh, vertically or eight feet horizontally? Eight feet vertically to the vertically. bottom of the sign. Okay. To be able to drive under it. Yeah, it's actually about seven feet, seven feet six inches right now mm -hmm. to the bottom oh. of the sign. Um, Thank you, Andrew. Wondering the if town, I'm sorry, the town sign is, I believe, seven feet to the bottom of the sign. So, is that an issue that the DPW is taking with the town as well? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, my, you know, this is getting into the weeds a little bit. I think there's a, you know, some discussion about whether, you know, if the, if, if the sign isn't really hanging over the sidewalk per se, the, the, the height can maybe be less than eight feet, but if it's going to hang over the sidewalk, then 
I guess DPW does have concern about uh, snowplow operators going under there. So I think it's just a, a you know conversation we need to figure out exactly what what is the requirement there. Okay, sure. So one of my thoughts about I mean is the um, yeah the, the number of signs here we've got sort of two lane designation signs um, in quick succession. There's town sign proposed, and is this this is this is not the corner where there's some other kind of there is a welcome. This is not sign. the corner on this side. There's yeah, there's, there's a welcome sign here also. Be a welcome facing sign facing the okay. other way up at the corner. Yeah, well, there's a tentative sign up at the top of the hill, but down at the bottom of the hill. Right here. The right has, here. Uh, there's a town sign, right? Oh, the welcome sign yeah. is right. Yeah. So the town yeah. is proposing a sign right there. Yep. Okay. Plus the street names. Don't forget yeah. that. Plus the street names. Yep. This is just a lot of signs. Uh, six, seven, and I see I see this kind of ragged little, you know, connect the dots thing of poles or signs on either side of the sidewalk. Um, yeah. It, it's that's a bit of a concern. Mm -hmm. I think this little strip is trying to do too much. Um, I have one. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, uh, dumb little comment, but there happens to be a sign there that says Amherst uh, Town Center next right. Presumably, that would go away with the new system, the one that's kind of crooked there <laughs> underneath the 116 Green south one. sign. Oh, yeah. thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, something's going to come down. <laughs> so what Guilford has told us about these signs is that some of them are actually required on, st on numbered roadways. So even though the town owns this portion of Route 9, the state still has a say over what kinds of signs go there. So I think you're right, we could probably eliminate Amherst Center next right, but we may not be able to eliminate the top portion of the sign. Which oh no, you wouldn't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know this would be terribly awkward, but um, could the Amherst College sign go on the other side of the street? Well, there is going to be one for facing the other direction. When you're coming east, there's going to be another one. Maybe it could be a two-sided sign. So in, in, our, in our experience, um, having directional information on the opposite side of the road that you're traveling is problematic. Um, you, you know, you're, you're focused straight ahead and you can really just about manage seeing the, seeing the information to your right hand side. Um, but if now you're putting that information on the other side of the road, um, you're now having to look over traffic um, and you're looking at a greater distance for the information. So you need to scale that information up um, to get it to be legible. So we really discourage very much putting directional information for eastbound folks on the westbound side. So what do you, yeah, and I, I completely understand that, but I mean, are there um, standards or uh, uh, some kind of measures to understand how difficult it is for drivers to take in seven signs in a row in that short distance. So there's street, there's welcome, there's highway, there's Amherst College directional, there's town, there are two lane designation signs, and there's the back of a welcome sign. So that's that's an awful lot of signs right there in that very short distance. Yeah, we would agree and, and that's what- How, how, do, you, how do we bring that up? Work? We're coordinating with the town to manage that. Um, we would not encourage adding another sign here into the mix of 
signs that the town is at, is 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 providing. So we're we we need to coordinate um, not only the number of signs here, but the position and also the information. So there, if there's some information that we're currently carrying that we no longer need to carry because it would be occupied on a town site, then, you know, and we are looking at this maybe more tandem approach where our information is actually maybe um, we're, we're looking at that. Um, but we would agree uh, that adding another sign to this mix um, is problematic and, and certainly we need to coordinate that. Chris, has Guilford told you whether it's a state requirement that we have two of those lane signs? Seems a little redundant, awfully close together. Especially as it's, it's marked on the street too. Um, I will ask him about that. And uh, I also wanted to comment on the fact that um, the welcome sign at the top of the hill was a kind of late idea. In fact, I think it was possibly the town manager who came up with that idea, but um, it was in response to our looking for a way of having a welcome sign coming from the west. And um, we've looked at a number of locations coming from University Drive up the hill and um, the town manager wasn't exactly satisfied with any of those locations. So he said, well, why don't we put a sign on this corner of the town common? Um, prior to that, uh, Ben and I had been working on the wayfinding system and we had a post directional sign at that intersection rather than having a welcome sign. So that's something that the town um, our staff needs to work that out and decide, are we having a welcome sign there or are we gonna have a post-directional sign? If we have our post-directional sign up there, then it's not going to be as um, confusing and muddy here with too many signs in a row. I mean, there will be more of a distance between the signs. So, so that's something that we have to um, consider. But in oh, any of I wonder if, you know, if the town welcome signs, sign goes there, could that be a two-sided sign at, that has the information that both the town sign and the college sign has on it? It's, um, it's a good question. I think if you're talking about directional information, uh, drivers need a little bit of forewarning before having to make actually make the decision to turn or to go straight. And so to have that information right at that point is a little too late. Um, that's why you see these kinds of directional signs preceding the actual decision point. Um, so so that, that's typically why we, we wouldn't do that. Also the town sign is set at sort of an angle, isn't it, Chris? It's not, it's not straight. Well, if we put a directional sign there, it would be a it would be straight. But if we're putting no, a yeah, sign, I, I was just because Jane saying. was saying if we use the back of the welcome sign, but it would be it wouldn't be straight across. Not straight. No, that's right. I, yeah. I think a particularly fruitful um, approach could be that the the town welcome is something that's stated at the point in which you actually enter Amherst. That That's this, what they were trying to do. It was way down. A, yeah, this is a major decision point here, not necessarily a welcome point, unlike the, the college campus where this is in fact the edge of the campus where we do want to welcome people. But mm -hmm. that said, it sounds also like a big decision maker for putting the Amherst welcome sign here was that it will carry the downtown message. Um, but that's really a message that could be well suited on a directional sign. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so if the if part of the impetus for a sign there is getting that messaging at that point, that could certainly be done with a directional sign, which sounded like your your original intent, Chris. Um, so, uh, so Chris, now that the, that corner of University and um, 
uh, what's not Snell there, what is it? University and, and Route 9, now that that's being developed and that little house is gone and everything, would that maybe be a better space for a sign? Yes, as a matter of fact, we're talking to Barry Roberts and his attorney about the potential for putting a welcome sign on um, Barry Roberts' property at the university, at what is it called? One University Drive South, um, where that new building is going. Um, yeah, and then that would that would take care of the welcome to the town and we wouldn't have to have one here. Yes. It would make more does. sense. Yeah, so that's still um, under in conversation. We haven't... Right. All right, I'm, I'm gonna ask Pat uh, who has her hand up and then Robin who has her hand up. Um, just some thoughts, Jane, I share with you the concern about the multi signs in this very short stretch. And one thought that I have, if it's important to Amherst College to designate the directions to their admission center and their athletic uh, buildings, could that go on the corner under preceding Boltwood that, that Amherst College has housing on um, or, or buildings that they own um, and add a, a line to it, um, right turn on Route 116. And then it would allow the town to give directionality during this period stage. And you, you know your observation or Jan's that we've got two signs directionality for lanes seems quite unnecessary. But I think the sign that is the state sign, I guess, Chris, you, you, you told us that that Amherst Center next right would suffice for that. Um, and so maybe it's a diminishing of signs there as opposed to an addition of signs because it's, it's a very busy short stretch and um, the town might not need to do the welcome sign there if coming from the east and, the, and there probably is a similar sign to this on the other side of, of South Pleasant Street to use that to facilitate directions to the center of town, which is important. It's economically important for Amherst. But I, I think that Amherst College could move, if it's important to Amherst College, move the sign back, leave it on that north side of the street, but move it back across Boltwood to where they, they have the property. I think that's part of what we're going to be exploring with the town uh, planning department and their sign locations. Like, you know, are we, again, doing this sort of tandem approach um, before and after Boltwood, for example, as you're suggesting. So well, we're going to be looking at, we're gonna be yeah, looking I think at it seems more of, appropriate yeah. to have the Amherst College signs before Boltwood because that is your property. Um, and to minimize the signage um, as you approach 116, um, leaving the Amherst Center next right, then there could be other signs it, it, that belong at Amherst property that would designate. I'm, I'm sure that, you know, Amherst wants to also designate the direction to UMass. And um, so we're, tonight we're talking about Amherst College. And, and I agree with Hetty that we would love post pandemic to be able to walk the campus. It's been closed for 18 months now. Um, and so there are sites on campus that you might want to have signage, but I think this little stretch is just, just would be overloaded with signage and I'm all for simplicity. So it I'm wondering like if we might want to um, respectfully move on. We've got eight more to talk about. Yeah, yeah I'd like to um, recognize Robin who's had her hand up and then I think we do need to move. Sure, um, I'll be brief. I, I concur with the need to declutter um, as a relatively recent parent of um, co visiting college students. Um, I'd see the logic of that directional sign being right there. And I don't quite understand the logic of the Amherst welcome sign at that particular intersection. It seems like that should be more at the periphery of the town. And by the time you've gotten to this intersection, you would likely know you are already in Amherst. Um, so those are my points. 
Thank you. So, Chris, so we're, 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 we're marching on, we're rushing on to sign number three. Sign number three is a grand sign. It's, um, it's called the Downtown Gateway Sign. It's at the corner of College Street and um, South Pleasant Street. It's this welcome sign into the Amherst College campus. So um, it really marks kind of the entry into the campus, even though this is actually town property, but Amherst College has been maintaining this portion of the campus and to all intents and purposes, it appears to be part of the campus. Thank you. Uh, I love it. I mean, I love the granite seat bench and the, and the post and it just is really, really nice right there. Um, so I see Pat, you still have your hand up and Robin, you had, Robin has taken your hand. Yeah, I, I just had a question. I'm remembering from the presentation of the sign that it's four feet high. And I appreciate that that's for the visual um, of it, but the sign directing to down by the entrance to the athletic buildings and admissions is lower than that. And, and so just in terms of um, height of these signs, what um, decisions are being made and does that figure into the town side um, discussion? Well, it, 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 it's more to do with the geometry of the site, to be honest with you that the, the two signs are actually very similarly scaled. It's just that this, this grade is sloping downward. And so you end up with a taller um, support of granite here. And so it's really this height that gets to the four feet, as opposed to the other end of it here, which is more in the line of two and a half to three feet. Um, so the other site, which we'll look at, is relatively flat. And so it's really just like, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so it, it really has mostly to do with the grading of the site, um, Pat, and, um, and not necessarily the overall scale of the sign itself. They're very similarly scaled um, signs. Sorry for the confusion. Well, that's all right. I just, I, I, I think that they're tasteful. I'll use that word. Um, and they serve their purpose. I just had a question as to why one was seemingly more prominent than the other, and it's at a more prominent location. So that could be part of it, but I hadn't taken into consideration the grade or how important that seating, it doesn't, the seating part doesn't look as prominent here as it does in the other location at the, at the athletic buildings. And, um, admissions. Yeah, the seating at this at this particular location is shorter um, right. than than the than the one over at uh, athletics. Um, athletics, I believe is around 23 feet of seating. Um, and then this one is around 18 feet. And how high is the seating at its lowest point? At its lowest point, it's uh, six, I believe it goes from 16 to 18 inches. Okay. And I and I, I guess that works for for mm -hmm. most people. Um, Eighteen inches is considered standard for a bench. Mm -hmm. Thank I you. It's a, it's a nice thing to have too. I I've waited for that crosswalk signal for quite a while <laughs> at times. So it, it has a practical function too, which is kind of nice. Yeah, I I agree with that, Andrew. But I, I'll come back to my kind of introductory remarks. The the, the the, the, the real notion I think for us, for the college is that it signals um, welcoming and, and you, know, you know, sure, you, you can sit here, maybe you never will, um, but you know, as you drive by, you see like, oh, there's a place you could sit. It's a, it's a welcoming gesture. And so that, that's really kind of the, um, again, the kind of the, the, the core um, intentionality behind all of this. Thank I was you. glad to see that the other one you ha you are styling it as a photo op because this is also going to become one and there's going to be people standing in the middle of the intersection 
to get back to get the whole family in. So it's good that the other is more attractive for that. It's going to happen either way, though. Here, hey, Hetty, you have a comment, question? Yes, I do. It's just a comment. Um, as we're at this location, I I'm wondering whether there could be um, assigned to the AME Church. Um, is it? I always want to call it Wayland Street. It's not Wayland Street, but um, someone help Woodside. Is it Woodside Avenue? Help me yeah. out. Someone. It's Woodside Church, isn't it? Yeah. I don't think, I don't know what the avenue is. Uh, so I, that's an important um, place in Amherst, and also for the uh, um, at the Strong House, the uh, Amherst History Museum. Um, I didn't see any signs for, for that, but That's those would be the um, town. Yeah. that would be on, on the town side. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, of course. Um, I'm 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 sort of feeling like I, I'm straying into territory that may not be to do with the history mm -hmm. of the common. Um so I, I'm not feeling like I'm on very strong ground here and, and I'm sort of looking for us to kind of keep as close as we can to, you know, what we're here for, um, you know, and now that I've, now that I've said that I thought the sign was too big, <laughs> you know, which I realize is maybe completely beside the point in terms of what my role as a commissioner might really be in this meeting. Um, so I, I, I just look to Ben and, um, Jane, to, to just clarify that maybe a little bit. Okay, thank you, Hetty. I, I, I see Robin's hand up and Janet's hand up. And then as we move to sign number four, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask people to confine their comments and questions to 30 seconds. Yeah, thanks, Jane. I, I just wanted to remind people we do have a few other things on the agenda. Hopefully we get to them, but maybe maybe we won't. But um, yeah, the, the purview of the commission is really on how do these signs impact the, the view of the historical landscape of the town common. So um, that I mean, I, you can certainly offer uh, input on the, the design of the signs and the size and, and all of that. That's welcome. But uh, that's kind of what the ask is. Okay, Thank Robin. you. Um, yeah, I was just going to um, uh, concur with that and look for just guidance from as we're commenting. Let us know if we're just veering into what should be discussed in design review so that we can um, just be more efficient. And um, yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you, Jan. I'm just wondering what those silhouettes are, those two tall, narrow signs in white. Is that more directional signs proposed? That, those will be um, new proposed um, uh, crosswalk signs uh, that the DOT is putting in. Who is? You the, are? Uh, no, the, 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 the state is putting in. Uh, state uh, DOT. Yeah, yeah, state DOT. Oh, the DOT. Oh, yeah. so there's going to be even more clutter. I mean, it even affects your sign, It you know, a little bit. Okay, so we can hear about that. Hey, I just interject something here, Jane. Yes, please. I wanted to let the uh, Historical Commission know that the Mass DOT, Massachusetts Department of Transportation, is planning a major um, improvement from University Drive all the way up through this intersection up to the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. So they'll be re replacing crosswalks and repaving, and they'll be adding. Um, a multi-use path and uh, or actually two, two five foot wide sidewalks and bicycle lanes and restriping and doing all kinds of things here. So um, Amherst College has offered to make uh, specific changes to the pavement around this Amherst College sign to make it more navigable and um, just better looking as and they're paying for that as part of the mess. DOT effort to improve this road from South Pleasant Street down to University Drive. Just wanted to let you know about that. Nice. Thank you. So let's go to the next sign. Okay, the next sign is um, a vehicular directional sign and it's located at South Pleasant Street, um, just south of College Street. So it's a uh, sign on a pole. 
And that's the sign right there. Um, the town also has a sign proposed in this location. It's a, a post directional sign. Um, we're feeling that we can move our sign farther to the south, uh, closer to um, the driveway that goes in. I forget the name of the driveway, but- um, Quadrangle. Quadrangle Drive, thank you so much. Um, so to get it out of the way of this Amherst College sign, but this is the, this is the sign that Amherst College is proposing here. And what is the content of this sign? Uh, uh, upper is arrow to the right, uh, museums and visitor parking. Uh, forward would be the Emily Dickinson Museum. Again, uh, whether or not that remains uh, is up in the air, uh, whether or not that becomes part of the, the town wayfinding, um, and then also downtown. Okay, thank you. And then um, the town sign, the content of the town sign at that location. Can you show that, Ben? Yeah, it's... Um... Let's see, I have it up here. I think it uh, definitely points downtown, straight ahead, uh, Jones Library, straight ahead, parking, straight ahead, town hall, straight ahead, and also Dickinson Museum. So um, we would remove the redundancies here in the messaging, obviously, um, and reconfigure our sign accordingly. Um, Pat, is your hand up? Yes, it is. Um, I'm going back to a, a previous comment about the town signage that um, anything straight ahead should also include the Amherst Historical Society Museum. I, I just thought I heard the, the Jones Library, um, but the, the Amherst Historical Museum um, should probably also be on that sign. Okay, thank you. Robin. It's, it's, it's a town treasure. Robin? Uh, that was an error. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a good point about the History Museum. Um, okay, so the town has, a, has an idea what to do with its sign. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Any other discussion of this location? Okay, what's the next sign? Sign is, um, it is a secondary gateway sign. It's at the corner of Quadrangle Drive and South Pleasant Street on the south side of the intersection. What's the number, Chris? It's A. 2.002. And, and this is facing which direction? Here you are entering um, Quadrangle Drive and um, as if you're coming from the north or the west. Okay. So the sign is perpendicular to South Pleasant. So you'll see it coming Bound, I mean, no, southbound and west and northbound. And the town doesn't have any signs in this location. Okay. Um, other comments, questions? I would just mention to Tom that if the, if the college is trying to keep people from driving in there, it's not clear and uh, if you're if you're going to the library and you're dropping things at the library, you have to go all the way around the circle to get to the front of the library. It might be good if the library had a drop area down below in that parking lot on College Street, if you want to restrict vehicular traffic through here. Is Tom still there? Yes. We're all taking notes. Yeah. Take, taking notes, exactly. Great. Okay, the next sign. The next sign is at Quadrangle Drive on the south side of Quadrangle Drive. It's a vehicular directional small sign. It's B2.002.
so I, this is within the town common, even though it appears to be on Amherst College campus. It's on Quadrangle Drive. Just as a kind of a general principle, I don't have any concern about the Amherst College signage system in the interior of the common area that's maintained by Amherst College. I guess it's mostly for me just looking at the kind of lineup of signs, uh, um, street side on the main town thoroughfares. So I have no no comment about about these on the interior. Okay, and I I agree with you. This is this is interior. I consider this interior campus, and there's no conflict. Okay. Okay. Um, Shall we then proceed? Next sign is um, it's a horizontal gateway sign. So this is the sign that's going to be uh, similar to the one the the sort of grand sign that we saw um, with a seating wall. This sign is located at um, the driveway that leads to the gym and to the ore rink, and it's a kind of welcoming. Um, area for the athletic center. Nice crocuses. I guess, can I just confirm that tree or suggestion of a tree, those are existing, right? I think, is there- a They are, those are, that is the bosque of pine trees that are currently located. Um, the uh, intent is to possibly limb up some of that, okay. um, but the intent is to uh, those for those trees to remain. Great. But uh, we are proposing some uh, surface level improvements here. So the, the walkway, correct me if I'm wrong, Sam, but the walkway would be repaved. Correct. Um, Can you show a, a map of how this interacts with the roadway there? So that the commission uh, can see where this is. It's in the at. planning board submission. Sam, do you have that handy? I have it handy if you don't. Uh, I should be able to dig it up real quick. And while he's looking for that, Pat, do you have a question? I don't have a question. I just have a comment that um, having gone to many hockey games at Amherst College, I'm familiar with this entryway. And I, I've always thought this was part of the campus. So I don't see this necessarily from my perspective as an issue for the town. It's, it's technically on the, on the South Common. It is. But it is part of that common that's maintained by the college. Right, correct. correct. Yeah. And, yeah, and and so it doesn't, doesn't intrude on the town per se, but it gives a nice opportunity for people who are going to the admissions or to the sports arenas, um, a, a, a welcome, an Amherst College welcome. And so I, I don't know the legal particulars involving this, but I think it's probably a nice addition. So, so you can see where this is located okay, now. The, the street on the left is South Pleasant Street. And obviously the one on the right is the driveway to the admissions office. And so this will be on the corner of that um, South Pleasant Street as you enter the college at the athletic center. So it's kind of across from like Hitchcock Drive and some of those? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I know what it is. It, it seems to me an improvement of that entrance. That's certainly the intent. And we've been working with uh, a landscape firm agency um, on these kinds of landscape improvements because we think that the more we can really integrate the gateway sign with the site and create a real um, 
beautiful place for the gateway, I think the, the better the experience is going to be. So um, that, that's the intent. I like it. Great. Yeah. I, I don't have an issue with this particular signage. I like it as well. Good. So next sign. Next sign is um, parking lot sign, a parking lot ID sign. It's called D1.007. It's at the entry to the parking lot at the gym and or rink. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have that one rendered. Um, we do have an elevation of it, however. It's right across the street from the one you're looking at now. Yeah. The location of it. So yeah. the location is the blue sort of turquoise sign that um, Seth is pointing to now. Yeah. And, um, Sam, can you zoom into that, the plan blow up there? Because there's multiple signs here that they're going to talk about. They're going to talk about all this. Yeah. So we just looked at A1002, which is the purple one. Now we're talking about D1007, which is the one opposite that. Mm -hmm. And that's going to look like um, what you have here in an on image. The, on the left. Yep. Okay. I have no, no concerns. Mm -hmm. No objections. This definitely seems like on campus signage. Yeah. Okay, the next one is a different color. The next one is um, B1.008. It's a vehicular directional primary sign. It's at the south end of the parking lot. And it doesn't show up in this image, but I think it shows up. Yeah, that's, that's it for that orange. Uh, sign right there. So um, that points to uh, admission, alumni gym or rank, left for Pratt Field and forward for downtown. So that is kind of close to the edge of the road. So you would see that driving north towards the center of town as you pass the athletic facilities. <laughs> So, the so in this case, sign, sorry, the, the previous sign, was it um, parallel to the road? What is the, what is the relationship between their orientation? This South Pleasant. Previous sign was north at the north end of this parking lot. And okay. this one is at the south end okay. of the parking lot. Okay, thank you. And Amherst College maintains this area. So the height of snowplow, uh, Passage doesn't matter. This is a DPW issue. Okay. I also do not believe that there is a um, sidewalk at this area. There's not. Oh, oh okay. All right. Um, next. The next one is the last one, and it's a vehicular directional secondary sign B 2.004. And it is on the south side of the drive to the gym and or rink. Um, and based on your previous comments, it seems that you would um, kind of view this sign as being part of the campus signage. So um, whoever is showing this, Sam, was yep. just moving his cursor around there and showing you where that sign is located. It's the orange sign here. And it's going to look like um, this sign on the left, on the right. Uh, B2.004. Mm -hmm. okay. So you're looking east when you're looking at it? Yes, plan, right. plan east, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so now having seen all of the signs and locations, um, uh, First of all, I'll ask members of the commission if they have any other sort of summary comments or questions. And then um, I guess I've got a question for, for the town. So. Mm -hmm. um, one more um, place that 
is really cool on campus is that building that has been kind of turned into a performance space inside um, near oh, Fair Fairweather, is it? Um, it's a, it, was it a, um, a, some kind of a, not pumping station? Um, the powerhouse? Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, it's yeah. getting late. Yeah, that's a really cool place that, um, you, you know, it's a little bit awkward and wiggly, you know, and it's like, am I supposed to be here? Or am I not supposed to be here as an, as a, you know, as a town person or not a college person kind of thing? Um, but very cool. Okay. Um, let's see. So a question I have for the town is, um, I, I'm thinking that the town wayfinding system is pretty much baked right right now, um, and that uh, there's no no is is there an an option a possibility to um, make the frame of the town signage a little more compatible with the posts of the college signage and that so. There is actually no need to answer my question. I'm only just, <laughs> I'm only just thinking about those signs that are, you know, kind of getting close to the same spot. But um, yeah, I, I would say I don't know about the design per se. That that would that would start a whole other oh, no, uh, not the conversation. Design. But I think that the we're open to uh, relocating signs, but it would. Uh, you know, if I'm not mistaken, I think that would require, a, you know, further conversations or approvals from town council. But it's, you know, I think we we want to make both sign systems work and make them compatible. So we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we can explore that option. Yeah, it's certainly. Really the, yeah, it's really just the finish color uh, from brown to char. You know, the difference between the brown and the charcoal. Um, that was that was mostly mm -hmm. what I was referring to. I think we're wedded to the brown color, the dark brown color. In fact, we already have a sign installed at Kendrick Park Playground. It was just put in a couple of weeks ago. So, um, you know, we're getting away from the color, the sort of orangey color that we have up on Triangle Street at the roundabout, but we are pretty committed to the brown color. Okay, okay. thank you. Um, has has the historical commission given you some helpful input or feedback? Is there something that we've missed uh, that would be useful to you? I think um, we would like to have a sort of overall um, thumbs up or thumbs down, you know, on the 10 signs that you've seen or nine, I can't remember how many. I think there were 10 in initially, but perhaps nine that you looked at carefully. Um, and then acknowledging the fact that we still have work to do in the areas where the town has signs and Amherst College has signs. There's more coordination work that needs to be done there. But if you could give us some kind of a um, positive or hopefully positive recommendation on the Amherst College um, sign system as it's being proposed for the town common. Um, that would be helpful. Uh, Design Review Board meets tomorrow night and the Town Services and Outreach Committee is meeting on um, fr uh, Thursday. Thursday. And um, that may not be their final meeting, but you never know, it could be their final meeting. So they may be looking for, um, you know, kind of a definitive re recommendation from you. And we are doing planning board next Wednesday and disability access uh, whatever the, sorry, whatever the acronym is, DAAC, the following week. So we've got everybody lined up here. Robin? Um, I was gonna suggest that um, our recommendation, just note the two areas that it sounds like are being worked on regarding duplication and cluttering, if that's a good enough summary. Okay. But then in general, it, I think the sense of the commission is that we find the style and design of the science to be tasteful and 
in keeping with the look of the town, right? I mean, everybody kind of agrees with that. Agreed. Agreed, Pat? Mm -hmm. Agreed. I, and I think the notes from this meeting will help us to, to spotlight the areas where we have concern. And that was primarily between South Pleasant Street and Boltwood. Um, there may have been a few others, but, but, but primarily our suggestions were just related to user-friendly, but in terms of the town versus Amherst College, that stretch of signage um, as proposed doesn't work. Mm -hmm. We agree with that. Yeah, what I can, I was just gonna offer Jane, um, what I did similarly for the West Cemetery conversation is I can kind of put together notes from uh, this discussion um, in like kind of a memo form and then uh, just email that out to, to this group as soon as possible, given how the meetings are coming up. Um, and then just if, if, if anyone has any issues with, with how I've you know, characterized comments, uh, you can let me know over email, but otherwise I can kind of summarize this conversation uh, over uh, in a memo, send it out, make sure everybody's okay with that, and then transmit that to uh, Amherst College and the DRB and TSO and town council kind of as the recommendation and summary of discussion. Thank you, Ben. Sound, sounds good. And Chris, thank you for highlighting those particular sites that help focus us. You're welcome. Okay, thanks to you all. Thank you for spending your evening with the Historical Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Today, right. Thank you very much. Good night. Yeah, thanks everyone for coming coming tonight. Appreciate it. Great. Okay. Um, thanks, Seth. Thank you. Yeah. So next is um, Historical Commission CPA projects or CPA projects in uh, in general. And, and is there? I don't know if there is. Um, I think George Naughton from the Amherst Historical Society is is here and wishing to speak to the CPA process. Yeah, hopefully he's still with us. Um, I just I put this on the agenda because the uh, CPA process is starting um, next month. And for those who don't know, the CPA is Community Preservation Act Fund. So there's a pot of money that the town can use um, specifically for historic preservation, recreation, and conservation. Um, but often, the, you know, the Historical Commission might want to put forth a project idea. Um, the Historical Commission will also be asked to review projects that are submitted uh, for historic preservation from outside um, entities, uh, including one of them perhaps being the Strong House, the Amherst Historical Museum. Um, so I think we, if we have time and if we want to, we could talk about CPA projects that the Historical Commission might want to put forth. But um, also George has uh, been uh, waiting and hoping to talk to us about a CPA application that the Amherst History Museum is interested in pursuing for some restoration work at the Strong House. Um, and what are the dates this year that we're looking at? Yeah, it's, um, I believe it opens on September 1st and closes on October 1st. So um, we could potentially have an, uh, more, another opportunity to, to talk about this before um, submit the deadline for submission. Okay, at this point, it, if you could uh, promote George to a panelist. Let's let's hear from him. Mm -hmm. So, um, hi George. I hope you're still with us and went a little bit late. But thanks for your patience. I think you're on mute. Actually, if I can uh, ask you to unmute there. Okay. Good evening. Uh, yeah, please, please uh, share with us what what you have in mind about CPA and the Historical Society. I don't have a prepared speech, but I'm the president of the Amherst Historical Society and Museum. And we have custody of the Strong House, as you know, 
And about a month ago, I saw that plaster was falling out of a portion of the second floor ceiling. So we are getting estimates from plasterers about um, how much repairs will cost and what sort of repairs might be necessary. If some plaster is falling, then other plaster might be ready to fall. So we need to get um, an educated, trained opinion on all of that. And then once we have cost estimates for the work, we thought that this might fall under the general purview of a community preservation grant. Um, since the Stronghouse is a, is, it's on the historic register, it is a historic building and it's the home of the History Museum. I've never dealt with the CPA grant funding process before. So I reached out to the Historical Commission and asked for advice. How do I go about doing this? Once I have work estimates in hand, um, I'd like um, advice on how to go through the process to actually ap apply for a grant. Okay. Um, so let's see, Ben, has, the, has this year's application materials, have they been? No, I think they actually are released or posted online on, on September 1st. So I, I've not seen the application quite yet. Mm -hmm. um, when we were meeting last year, there was discussion of providing a, um, just a PDF paper example form so that people could review. I was, um, I'm not sure exactly where it would be on the website. Maybe you would know better than I, Ben, but um, for this purpose so that, that applicants could look at the application form before it, would, it actually went live. So I don't know if that's there or not. I've not seen it. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, the Historical Society has been an applicant in the past. I'm not sure how long ago it was, but um, there, I'm sure. I will. I would. I am pretty sure that that we can find for you a sample application, just to get into your from last year to get into your hands, so you can see what the questions are uh, mm -hmm. and what kind of information is is requested. I think you're you are a little bit ahead of the game in um, having solicited estimates already because that makes for a much stronger application when you have some real, real costs and not just ideas about costs. So that's a good, you've taken a good step. Um, multiple estimates are good as well. I know the committee likes to see, I'm, I'm by the way, I'm Robin Fordham and I'm the um, historical commission rep on the CPA committee. So, um, I could say that that's helpful to have more than one estimate um, and it would be a restoration project. So it should fall under funded, the funding category. Um, it's actually a very beautifully straightforward project. <laughs> I encourage you to apply. That's very encouraging. Um, I think we're getting at least two estimates. Okay. Um, I don't know if any of you know Ann Tweedy, um, but she's been on point for getting the plasterers in there and having them look at it. And and we're going to try to get uh, work estimates, time, money, you know, what's it going to take so that um, so we can get the ceiling back in shape. Um, and then the only other thing to keep in mind is that the CPAC has been working toward um, getting a grant uh, grant reporting process in place and making sure that funds are expended in a timely manner. So there's a limit of holding on to funds for three years and any funds that aren't used for uh, the purposes for which they were awarded are essentially returned to CPAC so, or CPA funds. But I, um, the reporting I sincerely process, hope. <laughs> oh, yes, right. <laughs> the reporting <laughs> process allows for explanations of uh, unanticipated delays. Like, for example, if one had a pandemic, 
that interfered with <laughs> construction okay. problems. So just so you know, those those uh, point taken. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think if uh, so, uh, as um, concerning process, um, Robin, you'll have to help me out here again. Uh, yeah. We we would like the historical commission gets to advise the community preservation act committee about historic preservation projects and and you know how we would how we would see the priority of projects. So it's helpful to the applicant to bring a, uh, an, the, the completed application or at least a draft application to a historical commission meeting. Um, Robin, prior to or post submission? Well, it, I mean, yeah, I mean prior not very long. No, prior to, I mean, this, this project sounds relatively straightforward, so it's not much of a concern. I mean, you're essentially doing what the CPA, CPAC wants applicants to do, which is come to the appropriate commission and ask questions. Um, once you submit your application, we'll get to review it anyway. Then we'll bring uh, to the commission the applications that were submitted under historic preservation. Um, and at that point, uh, we would review, review them in the commission meeting and you'd be invited and encouraged to come to that meeting to, to answer any questions we might have so that we as a commission can develop our recommendation for the committee. And then I take that recommendation to the committee and try to answer questions that they have. You also will present there. Okay, so um, uh, we will get all of our paperwork together and uh, submit the application and then the Historical Commission will review it and I'll attend and answer any questions. And then um, then who, the, who is the CPA group that actually approves the grant? And I would appear in front of them also. Is that yes. correct? Yeah, they will um, give you an invitation. There'll be a set presentation date. And then we, we recommend to the, um, the projects to the town council so we can, all right, now Jane, you have to tell me if I have this. <laughs> we can, we can re recommend it to the town council. Um, then the town council can decide whether to approve it or not. I suppose if we don't rec recommend it to the town council, then the Town Council cannot overrule us. I think that's correct. That sound right, Jane? If we don't, if the I CPAC think... doesn't, it doesn't recommend something to Town Council, then it won't be funded. But we don't have the ability to say it definitely should be funded. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, yes, that's the a distinction between Historical Commission and CPA Committee. Right. If the CPA right. Committee does not recommend it to Town Council, then it won't go forward. And yeah. um, I do have, I'm on the web page that at least has last year's information, which it looks like has um, a good inform, bit of information on it, at least. Um, I looked up, uh, proposed that it, if, you, if you Google Amherst, Massachusetts Community Preservation Act, it looks like the third hit on Google is propose a community preservation project. So propose a project to Amherst Mass should get you there and that'll give you um, an overview. Okay. There's criteria and submission information there too. And that will, will, I guess that will be where the live link is when the application process opens. Very good. I will be sure to go there. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for coming to tell us about what's happening at the Strong House and uh, We'll, we, we hope we can help you stop it. <laughs> <laughs> we think that bats are getting in actually. Um, our, one, of, one of our people has gotten phone calls in the middle of the night about uh, the motion sensors kicking in. Oh, mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> it's been traced to bats and we think that maybe the bats are getting in through the wood laths that no longer have plaster on them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, you've got 
you've got rolling consequences of the plaster. It's an old house. Yeah. It, it needs work. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, so how about historical commission CPA projects? Where, what, where, let's see. I guess just a, a status update where um, we've had a little bit of staff turnover in the accounting department, but we've, uh, the, the, we're about to put out the RFP for headstone restoration at West Cemetery. It's taken far too long. Uh, so hopefully that'll be a project that gets underway in the fall and finished up in the spring. Um, so that, that's a CPA funded project. Um, that was part two of three parts, right? That was, there's two allocations of $50,000 for, and so we're uh, doing uh, this work for $100,000. So, so, so this is two and three then, because we already yeah. did the first 50. Okay. Yeah. Correct. So we're getting close to the initial plan. I mean, there's probably stuff that's gotten messed up since. Yeah. But we're getting close then. Great. So we don't need to propose one more right now. I don't think so. I think part of the work that we're asking um, the consultant or the uh, memorial kind of like, uh, I'm blanking on the name, but the, uh, the folks that are the conservator, sure. that's the word. Yeah, conservator. Uh, part of their work is to, you know, most of the money will go towards actual restoration work, but we're also gonna ask them to do a little bit of survey work just to advise on uh, condition or like kind of remaining scope of work. Um, and we'll have a better sense, maybe this time next year um, of what remains. But as far as I understand, this should take care of kind of the, the most problematic remaining stones at West Cemetery. Um, Great. It's a relief. Mm -hmm. um, so we have talked, I guess, every so often in the last couple of years, at least about possibly updating the preservation plan. And um, the, whether that is a, an acceptable project for CPA funding. Yeah, and um, Jane, we actually, my, let me double check, but we actually have money for that um, from That's maybe 20, 2017 that we definitely should use. Oh my gosh, we should. Yeah. Um, yeah, we proposed it. We've just never done the work. Yeah. Preservation plan update from, okay. what is that? Is that 2020? No, 20, 20? Oh, that was pretty recent. Okay. F fiscal year 2020. So what was, how much was that? 20, that was 20, 25,000. 25, yeah. um, what is, wow. the, is the date of the preservation plan 2005? Because, um, okay, because I just downloaded the whole thing because I thought I should read it. <laughs> and then is the, the fiscal, this is so confusing, the fiscal year for the CPA grant is based on the year that it's awarded, right? So that would have been decided mm -hmm. on in 2019. Correct, yeah. Right, okay. So for that- the fiscal years weren't confusing enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, sorry to not, not have a grasp of this, but did we, did we create an RFP for that? No. No. Um, no. Okay. I think that's something we def. I think uh, my recollection is a conversation we had was you know wanting to kind of get through the the bylaw first. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> put that aside and then. Oh no wonder. Focus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We were being optimistic proposing in <laughs> yeah. that year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, so that's funded. The headstones are funded. Are there other things we 
didn't want to tackle. Um, done a lot recently. Yeah. Four tablets and. I I was going to add um, one potential idea is uh, you know if we if moving on from West Cemetery and looking at uh, South Amherst Cemetery and North Amherst Cemetery. Oh, really? And I, I think at this point, what's needed is just kind of like a, a, sur a, a condition survey. Mm -hmm. I've honestly, I haven't been to South Amherst Cemetery in many, many, many years. But from what I've heard from, you know, Alan Snow and some of the folks at DPW is that there's definitely some maintenance work needed there on the headstones and you know it's a, it, both of those North Amherst and South Amherst cemeteries are important assets for both of those communities so um, that might be something to look into. Yeah it's a good idea because if we just keep going then if we just ask every year you know and they and it's fresh in their mind that each year we're asking for money to keep the cemeteries maintained I mean right and we can go ahead and get the report and also the one from West Cemetery that they're going to do and then just ask for an appropriate amount next year in the fall. I mean, we could break it into three years again or something, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, I, I'm sort of, I don't know how you all feel, but I'm sort of thinking because we have these two projects that are funded and not done, mm. then we've got the, um, the prospect of applying for CPA funds for North and South cemetery surveys that if we ask, if we propose another project, we risk having too much, you know, more than we can actually manage in a year. I agree. Sounds like plenty. Okay. So, okay. Do we, so are we um, agreed that we'll, that the historical commission apply only for survey of North and South cemetery conditions? And Ben will write it up, right? Right, that makes sense. That makes sense to me, one, one step at a time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, this is, this is that, that that was just based off a conversation I had with Nate and Dave um, a few weeks ago, but I'll circle back to them just to make sure, um, you know, maybe maybe there's been a survey done in the past. I don't know. I just want to look into it a little bit more before um, recommending it uh, for for certain. But it seems like a the, kind of the next step in our quest to uh, restore Amherst cemeteries. We've been talking about it for years. Yeah. Yeah. Nate, so yeah. All right. Um, so, review. I just have a question for Ben um, related to what town, other town proposals might be coming up for historic preservation funds. And I was hoping maybe we could put a note in next month's meeting to discuss more thoroughly what maintenance means when we're considering yeah. these grants. Because last year we got we didn't, I, I don't think, um, I think we were working, yeah, we got hit with a ton of money and the town um, was not, I tried to make the argument that, um, that maintenance, that historic preservation maintenance, uh, that maybe awards should be limited for the, to the amount that uh, the maintenance is, made exceptionally expensive by the fact that it's historic preservation, but um, it was not met with a lot of support for that argument. But I do have the DOR guidance and I have all the definitions and everything. So we could have a conversation around that and maybe try to get more of a formalized understanding um, because it was a lot of money last year. And if you're yeah, gonna, we gonna bother to make that argument, yeah, yeah. Right. It'd be good if we if we had more of a sense what was coming and be able to be prepared instead of just having right. it one line on us. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm not aware yeah. of any town projects at this point. Was the was the slate roof the one that didn't get funded uh, in North Amherst? That's what I'm thinking of. That was a big one. 
and the South Amherst and the town hall, right? There were three. Yeah, but town hall, right. And town hall and, and South and Amherst went forward, but North Amherst didn't. Oh, okay. So it might be coming back to us and that would be. All right, um, project notification form for demolition of North Village and Lincoln Apartments at UMass. Mm. So yeah. This, yeah. this is a case in which this is state owned property. And uh, so we don't have jurisdiction. But Only it, it, advisory to mess historic, yeah. So yeah, I mean, it was a lengthy document, well over 100 pages. Um, not sure if folks had time to look at it, but it was for the demolition of North Village apartments and Lincoln apartments. Uh, both of them, I think, kind of mid-century uh, apartment buildings. Um, being torn down, I believe, for North Village will be um, similarly kind of like graduate student family housing. I'm not sure what Lincoln Apartments will be turning into that area, but uh, but these project notification forms, the, well the uh, Historical Commission has an opportunity just to voice any concerns about these demolitions, but to to the Massachusetts Historical Commission. If it seems fine, then I, d I do know that Lincoln Apartments does abut um, the Tan Brook at one end of the um, site. Mm -hmm. I, I I think I you know I don't know what the building materials are in those buildings. I know they've been they've had some problems with with some of the spaces and um, whether we have any whether we can ask for more information about how long the demolition is and what kind of mitigation they would be using to protect the neighborhoods around there, not just UMass, but the Lincoln Avenue area. Um, I, actually, I actually live in, in that neighborhood. Um, Eddie, are you talking about water pollution or what? I'm not sure. I, I mean, the, the 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 Tan Brook is being discussed by the Conservation Commission currently. I think tomorrow night. Um, so I know that there's some discussions going on. <laughs> uh, go where angels fear to tread. Um, you know about about you know that as a natural resource in the in the town, and um, I'm. I, I would just be interested to know what what um, provisions would be made for for how that demolition works in relation to that body of water because it feeds into the campus pond. I would suggest that you attend the conservation commission hearing about okay. it. That's not yeah. our historical commission. Right. Right. Okay. Just. And and I like those buildings, those Lincoln apartment buildings. I mean, I I I wish I wish we could repurpose them. I I, I wish we didn't have to demolish them. I mean, the you know they put up they put up students who had um, got COVID there, um, even though they'd also also started to um, have people leave the Lincoln apartments. So. It, 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 it's just a little confusing to me, um, you know, but I'm, I'm also concerned about what replaces them and how tall. It's, it's really not our purview though. I know. You know, and, and I, Jane, I'm sorry, but it's almost three hours and I've been up since three o'clock this morning working really hard all day. I'm fading so fast. I don't know how much more of this I can do. Let's can we finish this agenda item and then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. We have to do public comment. I don't no, think there's no anyone public, here. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. 
Yeah, I was at I was at South Emma Cemetery this morning, Jan. <laughs> so, I, I'm 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 in agreement. All right. So is there? Um, I, I'm hearing no concern about North Village. Any any con If there is concern about Lincoln Apartments, um, we can see what uh, the majority of the commission feels about that. And if a majority of the commission wants to register an opinion, then we can speak briefly about that. Um, is there concern about Lincoln Apartments? Hetty, I, I hear a yes from Hetty. Yeah, just about debris. I think you would, you, you know, potential for the pollution of the Tanbrook. Okay, that's, that's not our. Not, that's not yeah. it's not our building. <laughs> As then, historical <laughs> buildings, I don't think they well, have. Well, no, I think they're really good buildings. I think they're. I think they represent a, you know, a, a, a particular phase of UMass's campus development architecturally, and uh, I can't remember if they're mentioned specifically in Max Page's book, but um, I, I should have prepared better for this item. But I'm also conscious of how late it is. Right. Do we have the time have you, to? Have you read the PNF? No, I need no. to go. Okay, back. there's an opinion in the PNF uh, that I think is something we should call attention to, just so you're aware of it. Um, Thank you. Uh, let me see if I can find it quickly. Um, Do we have time enough to uh, table it and discuss it at the next meeting? If we can get it off our plate right now, I, I just would really okay. like to do That's that. It, the, so I'll read it. I'll read to you uh, <laughs> the opinion from um, um, John Bono, Einhorn Yaffe, Prescott, Architecture and Engineering. And I assume that means architecture and engineering at UMass, but I don't know that for sure. Um, saying for each of the Lincoln Apartments building uh, buildings that um, it's it is recommended not eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. The apartment complex is not recommended individually eligible as it does not possess individual significance. The buildings are not outstanding examples of architectural style or engineering methods. Although a large number of buildings on the campus are recommended eligible as part of a potential historic district, this peripherally located residential structure is not considered central to uh, defining or maintaining the character of the institution. Thank you, Jane. Yeah. Um, you know, I think a nice rendering of those buildings when they were new gives them a certain distinction i think that may have faded <laughs> yeah thank um, you i'm not going to pursue this okay. any other comments on lincoln no i just looked at images online and there are quite a few other similar project buildings around, I think. I don't think we're losing the only example. Okay. Ben, do we need to um, put something in writing for the Mass Historical Commission? Yeah, I can just uh, write, write them an email. Okay. All right, are we lively enough to adjourn? <laughs> yeah, I just wanna make sure we uh, set a next meeting date. We do have a... Um, potentially one uh, demo application. Uh, so at least three weeks out would be good um, just to have time to post that and everything. Three weeks from the application you've already received or it's coming just, in? Just from today. Um, oh, from today, okay. Yeah. So that would mean the next meeting. And are we gonna to stick to Wednesdays in general? Wednesdays in general are good for me, except I'm looking three weeks out would be the 15th and I have a conflict. It's also Yom Kippur Eve. I, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear it, Robin. 
Oh, it's um the eve of Yom, Yom Kippur starts. Oh, okay. oh thanks. Yeah. Um, so I could do the 14th or the 16th. Does that work, Ben, for the timing? Yep. The 14th um, is not good for me. I just started teaching at Boston College, and I don't know that I'll always get back to Amherst by this time. If I am there late, I'll have to stay past the traffic. So Tuesday, Thursdays, Tuesday, Thursdays. And I know that one of our new members can't attend on Tuesdays. So right. um, shall we try Wednesday the 22nd? Sounds good. Okay. Yep. That okay. I could probably be home in time. I'm going to be away. But I could probably be, be home in time for an evening meeting on the 22nd. OK. Does that work, Ben, for the timing of the yep. hearing? It sure does. Right. Yeah, it gives, it gives me even more time. <laughs> OK. All right. And, and we're on for 630. Is that standard? <clears throat> All right. Ready for the motion? No, I'm ready. <laughs> I move, we adjourn. I second. And Aye. all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Thanks you so all. Everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Okay, take care. Bye. Good night. <laughs>